Game Night in the region, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, streaming worldwide on the internet at facebook.com slash region sports, RSN YouTube, regionsports.com, and ihsaatv.com. Our tonight's video is presented by American Community Bank. We welcome you tonight from Crown Point on the campus of Crown Point High School as Von Tobel presents the Maribel Pirates, number two in our RSN poll, taking on the Crown Point Bulldogs, number one in our RSN poll. I'm Michael Brenner. I have the play-by-play -play for this evening's game along with the great and thankfully the only Jay Simmons. Jay, it is great to be back by your side today. Yes, it is. Mr. Brenner, it's good to be here with you tonight. We've got two undefeated teams. And let's look at number, uh, Maryville, number two in uh, coaches and uh, IFCA and the AP poll is number one. And like we said, as you just started, number two in the RSM poll, and that's 5A. And in 6A, the AP, uh, Crown Point is ranked ninth, and in the uh, coaches' poll, it is 11. So this is going to be a great game tonight, probably the best game in the area in the region tonight. Yeah, a lot of conference games getting started here this week, week three of the high school football season. It's crazy to think, Jay, at the end of tonight, we're one-third of the way through <laughs> <laughs> the season already. It feels like we just got yes, started. Yes, it is. Uh, we were here last week as well with this uh, matchup between Crown Point and Chicago Taft. Now we open up conference play. I got to ask you, you've coached in the Duneland. What makes, before we really dive into these teams, what makes the Duneland such a tougher conference versus others? Other than it's a lot of 6A and 5A schools, but what makes the Duneland kind of like that, that bruiser type of conference? Well, A... Not very many guys are playing both ways. So you're, they're going to be fresher, longer, and they're going to be hitting a lot harder throughout the game. And then secondly, bigger schools, bigger players, more, more players that are as big as you are. So it's going to be a very physical game tonight, and it's, it's a battle of extremes. You've got Maryville, which is extremely fast, can pursue from sideline to sideline. They'd like to go vertical, whereas you've got Crown Point. They're big, they're bruising. And they're going to they're gonna take it. They want a five, six-minute drive throughout the night to, to keep that Maryville offense off the field. So it's going to be extremes, but that's what happens. And both teams, you know, hey, welcome to the season. Both teams played, a, you know, a couple early games, not very very uh, difficult games. I mean, you got Maryville playing Andrean, won 40 to 13, played Hobart 31 to 12. And then on the flip side, you've got Crown Point 42 to 7 versus Lowell and Against Chicago Taft, 49 to seven. We were here for that game last week. A running clock most of the second half. So really, both of these teams are finally going to be tested tonight. That's 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 the fun part right here. And it took to week three. Yeah, I mean, when when you are one of the best teams in the area, like both teams are, two, I would say one and two in our RSN poll. So it's hard to get those matchups. You know, we talked about a little bit strength of schedule last week a little bit. When you get into conference play, obviously for both these schools, you play some tough competition. But then, you know, in those non-conference games, it's tough to play teams that are as good as you when you're the best in the region. <laughs> yes, it is. And it, it's difficult for the for the ADs to try and schedule those kinds of games because, you know what, you want to stay in the area and get some rivalry out of conference. Like, you know, for example, Crown Point, one of the longest standing games in, in the state of Indiana. And then, you know, on the flip side, you've got Maryville loves to play Andran. And then you date back to the old Doolin Conference when you got Maryville and Hobart playing against each other for conference titles back in the day. So they would like to keep those rivalries, but, you know, it's just tough to, you know, schedule those types of games. Right. Do you like the old Doolin or the new Doolin? Uh -huh. Both of them. You like both of them. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, yeah, so this is going to be a fun one here tonight. We're going to step away for about two minutes. We'll be right back on the Region Sports Network. Build by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit vontobels.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better together. Quintel Incorporated is a family-owned and operated company located in Northwest Indiana that specializes in the reconditioning, repair, and remanufacturing of heat exchangers. 
Since 1994, Quintel has been handling jobs of all sizes throughout the country. Equipped with the most modern technology and advanced tools, Quintel provides top-notch service. When you trust Quintel for all your needs, you'll get peace of mind and a finished job that exceeds your expectations. For more info about Quintel and the services they provide, visit quintel-inc.com. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. When life takes you places and you can't get to the store, shop online with Strack and Van Til to go. Our to go service is easy to use and it can save you time and money. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. For delivery or pickup, enjoy the convenience of letting our to go team shop for you. Enjoy your special moments. Sign up online today at shop.strackandvantill.com. Welcome back to Game Night, built by Von Tobel here on the Region Sports Network. Happy to have with, have you here with us this evening. And we do want to remind you, we'd like to remind everyone that video of tonight's game is presented by American Community Bank with locations in Cherryville, Crown Point, Dyer, Hammond, and Munster. American Community Bank is Northwest Indiana's local neighborhood bank. Visit acbanker.com to find out more information. Along with Mayor Pete Land and the Crown Point Pace Department are proud to support Crown Point Bulldogs football and say, Go Bulldogs! Crown Point remains dedicated to preserving history, celebrating everyday life, providing the best in-city services, and encouraging smart growth. Mayor Land and the Pace team invite everyone to Bulldog Park for a variety of concerts, including Lone Star with special guest Jamison Rogers on September 3rd. Hey, that's coming up this weekend. For more information, contact the Pace Department at 219-661-2271. All right, we've got a great matchup for you here tonight. We've got the Crown Point Bulldogs and the Maryville Pirates opening up Duneland Athletic Conference play tonight. Jay, you got the Maryville Pirates, who have really been one of the standout teams in the region for as long as I can really remember. I mean, they have just been torrid the last number of years as we're going to be getting ready for the national anthem here. you got to go all the way back to 1976 when you look at Miraville for a state championship. Nine and three last season. One of those losses came at the hands of the Crown Point Bulldogs, and we'll give you a little bit more of that information on the other side of, the, of our national anthem, which is going to be brought to you today by the Crown Point Marching Band. All right, a wonderful rendition of the National Anthem. Always love when we get to hear oh, yeah. the, uh, the bands from the high school getting to perform the National Anthem. All right, as I was seeing for the Maryville Pirates, 9-3 and three last year. One of those losses came at the hands of these Crown Point Bulldogs. A little different look for that Bulldog team than, than this year, but 2-0 uh, and o this on this season. Brad Cease, starting in 2000. 15 was seven is seven and one against Crown Point. That first loss of nice. his career 
coming in last year against the Bulldogs. They hadn't won a game against Maryville since 2014, the final year of Zach Wells. Yeah, and you look at uh, Coach C. He's 79 and 49, 77 and 49 in 12 seasons overall, 64 and 32 at Maryville High School. You, you talk about Maryville, they're averaging 35 points a game, giving up defensively, only giving up 12. And that starts with Dante Pope, the 6'1", 170 pounds senior at the quarterback position. He's 16 for 22, 256 yards, only one interception so far on the season. 23 rushes, 217 yards rushing. Uh, that's pretty good. I need this guy on my fantasy team, huh? <laughs> and then you look at John Peters, one of the receivers, six catches on the season for 115 yards. You got Ryland Lewis with one catch, nine yards, and then let's say Z- that. Zamir Martin. Zamir Martin. All right, thank you for helping me out there. Five you, catches, five catches, 66 yards. And then you got uh, JQ Johnson. 38 rushes, 288 yards, one catch, one yard. I don't like that stat. <laughs> <laughs> I like but, the rushing yards, though. But yeah, but he's, he's got four guys that he can throw to at any given second, so that's that's their offense. When, when those guys are clicking, they can put up some points and put them up quickly. Yeah, absolutely. It makes it really nice when you have as many weapons, and we know for the Crown Point Bulldogs, they also have a lot of those weapons as well. J.Q. Johnson, by the way, fourth, uh, do I have that right? Fourth in the region at those 288 yards uh, through week two of the season. So fourth in the region. You only got a few guys ahead of him, and so not too shabby when you when you think about all the running backs in the region. Let's talk about Crown Point for just a moment here. We had a chance to see him last week. We know Yes, can, we did. We know they can spread things out. Is they're going to be hitting the the field here in just a minute. I talked about second or fourth in the league, but now let's take a look at Noah Ehrlich, who, you know, you're going to point out how many yards he's got, but man, oh man, he's second in the region in terms of passing yards so far. Yeah, he's off to a good start. 35 for 45, 503 yards passing in just two games. Five touchdowns, only two interceptions. I love that touchdown to interception ratio. He's not a big rusher, but he is great scrambling in the pocket. He's got four rushes for 14 yards and a touchdown thrown in there. But I just love the way he can maneuver himself in the pocket, keeps the plays alive. And that's when that's when they're really the receivers become open is when he can extend the play. The, the key, for, one of the keys for the Bulldogs is to keep him upright because guess what? Maryville's going to play some man defense, and they're going to b- bring an extra guy to make sure and try and get him on the ground because guess what? No quarterback's good when they're laying on their back. No, I agree 100%. <laughs> and then one of those receivers that you're going to be talking about, Nick Soley, uh, tell me how many yards he's got there. 11 catches for 187 yards. That is tops in the region through week two. Not too shabby for the young for the, uh, for the senior. Yeah, it is. And you got, you got a couple other guys, uh, like Cam Sorcy with three catches. Oh, thank you. And 44 yards, you got Landon Delich, five catches, 85 yards. You got the tight end, Seamus Molaski, five catches, 78 yards, and two touchdowns. So he's got a, a plethora of receivers to throw to. You like that? Yeah, that's, that's a good word. Now, can you spell it is the question. <laughs> no, I cannot. <laughs> if you wrote it down on a piece of paper, I probably wouldn't be able to pronounce it. And then you got Larry Ellison, the running back. I uh, left him off. Uh, yeah, 29, yeah, you can't forget that. 25 rushes, 190 yards, five touchdowns, three catches, 20 yards. So they're diversified. And I like it. Last week they they really mixed up the playbook. They were able to run and throw on any given downs, which I think is going to give Maribel some headaches. That's what they got to be. They, they can't be predictable on offense. All right, we're going to wait to see here for oh, there just we go. a moment as – Crown Point looking to head on to the field. One of the cool, we always talk about kind of the traditions around yes. all the region uh, teams. And, you know, at Hobart, you know, obviously when they enter, they come over the hill, which uh, is a great like entrance. Uh, but Crown Point, if you get here early enough, about a quarter to six, maybe a little bit before six, they do a march from the school and walk over to the other facility. With across, the band, right? Yeah, with the, with the, the band, kind of, the cheerleaders, everybody. Yeah, everyone just kind of on a nice little march. And they're not in their, in their full gear yet, but that's where they're going to go over to the other uh, facilities and uh, but it's a nice little march that they make across uh, across the football field here on the track in front of uh, in front of the, f- the fans yeah it is nice uh, well if we got a minute here let's talk about that Maryville defense you've got uh, you got uh, Terrell Elmore with three tackles for losses up front you've got James Veal with nine tackles for loss or one sack 
So you got a couple guys up front that are going to be going to be havoc in the backfield. So that offensive line for Crown Point has got to be on its best tonight. And and then on the flip side, the same thing with the Bulldog defense. Bulldog defense does that three six or three five look. So what they're going to do is they're going to be blitzing guys from all over the place. And you never the thing is with that three five look. There may be one play, they got the defense, uh, they can have an outside linebacker blitz it from the left. The next play, they might have a middle linebacker. So blitz pickup for the Maryville Pirates offensive line is going to be huge tonight. If you look, go back and switch to your other sheet here for a second, because we talked about Crown Point last week. They have that 3-5-3 setup. For the Maryville Pirates, though, they've got a 4-5-2 set up how is that any different to to an extent i mean obviously it's still five in the middle right but are they going to bring some pressure on the edges from well those what, what they do is you, if you look at it they've got the a couple of those guys number 11 john peters and jamal ramsey those guys are cornerbacks so what they got a two they got two free safeties over the top they got those two corners and what they'll do is they'll match those four up with the receivers and then any given play they can they'll rush four and they'll bring one linebacker but which one Nobody knows. So right. it's going to be just somebody coming, blitzing. So they're going to try and get that guy get that guy through as quickly as possible. So in essence, it's still a 4-3 defense. Yes. Just they have it set up on right. the depth chart as it's a 4-5-2, as a which is I've never seen that before. So that's why when I was looking at this, I, that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you for sure as we're still waiting for the teams to head on out. We'll go ahead and take a look at our Economy Electric heating and cooling forecast brought to you by our friends at Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. It is a very comfortable yes, 77 degrees here at Crown Point High School. Uh, very few clouds in the sky as the sun begins to set out to our left. And uh, really the only sun shining is still on the, uh, the opposing fan section yeah, over there. So how lucky they get to look right into the sun for the first quarter, right? I know, right? <laughs> lucky for them. And you know what, Jay? You were starting to mention some of those uh, some of those starters in the lineup. Why don't we go ahead and talk about the Gladish Law Group starting lineup? Is that what your fever is yes, writing? Yes, that's what I was good, just it. about to see, do. I here we just, go. I could just read your mind as the teams uh, getting ready to run out into the field. Here we can see the Maryville Pirates off to our left, making their way out of the field, and the and the Crown Point Bulldogs will be coming out to our right. So it's time for today's starting lineup, sponsored by Gladish Law Group. That's Gladish Law Group. They're here to help. Action, not words. So, for the Crown Point Bulldogs, we'll start with them. They're the home team today. Your starting quarterback, as we've mentioned. Jameis Malaski. On the offensive line, some of the most important guys that yes, really don't get are. talked about enough. Noah Ehrlich's best five best friends. <laughs> uh, every, 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 every Friday night, yes. Uh, the left tackle, Elias Pavyadakis, Jeff Machete, Nathan, uh, Nathan Gregory, Austin Rivera, and Paul Clark. That's left tackle, left guard, center, right guard, and then a right tackle. And then for the Maryville Pirates, you've got their defensive end, Terrell Elmore, Adam Campfor. As the Crown Point Bulldogs head out. Yes, they do. The and the fireworks sh shooting off there. Another beautiful night for football. So we'll continue on that Maryville Pirate defense. The nose guard, Roshan McGee. And the other defensive end is James Veal. Your cornerbacks, John Peters and Jalen Ramsey. Your linebackers, Trent Nixon, Jeremiah Jordan. The nickel is Trey Stevens. Your safeties, Jaden Mason and then Greg Hughes. On special teams, your kicker for the Bulldogs today. As the fireworks continue to boom, you got yeah. Oliver Brewer. And here's the thing about Oliver Brewer. He's got no field goal attempts. But he's 8 of 8 from PATs. So, <laughs> hey, he's got 8 points. He's good. So that means they're very efficient in the red zone. They are indeed. Yeah, we saw them. They were very efficient last week as cheerleaders heading on to their sides. And the music blaring here at beautiful Crown Point High School. Getting ready for the kickoff. And we do have, yep, we've got the Quintel kickoff that will bring you here in just a moment. Getting ready for week three of the high school football season. I, mean, I, I noticed a drone over here at some point to get some coverage. As the captains will head out to midfield and they will decide which direction we're kicking first and who's going to get possession of the ball first. And this is where uh, 
Mr. Simmons and I will be feverishly looking into our binoculars to make sure we can see whatever we need to see. And if you look out there, Jay, one of the guys, we've seen obviously Noah Ehrlich and both Clarks out there. Got Will Clark and then... It looks like Crown Point has, has deferred. So they defer to the second half. And I did want to mention uh, when we get to the Crown Point Bulldogs defense, uh, one of the guys that we talked about last week does have a, a sack on the season, but a former uh, Clark Coyote along oh, with him was Nate Kalk. He's in the starting lineup for the defense, but we'll get to him in just a little while when we see that Crown Point defense, which we are going to see that Crown Point defense in just a moment. So Gladys Law Group again is going to present the starting lineup. So we'll see the Maryville Pirates offense first. That's Dante Pope at the quarterback position. J.Q. Johnson as the running back. Your wide receivers, John Peters, Zamir Martin, Ryan Cummings, and Rynell Lewis. Your wide receivers. And then on the offensive line, you got Jaden Swanson at left tackle. defense the Bulldogs present and it creates a whole lot of chaos for a lot yes, of teams offensively. The defensive ends are Nate Calk and Seamus Mulaski and then the nose tackle in the middle there is Mark Gonzalez. Your linebackers Will Clark, Drew Kroll, Trevor Gibbs, Tom Fanton, Jacob Jones and then in the backfield will be Jalen Kelly, Griffin, Van Tischelt and Landon Delich. So we are just about ready for kickoff. And you notice one thing, as you're reading it, I saw there for the Bulldogs, they've got two guys starting both ways. You've got Landon Delich, wide receiver on the offense, and then you got Seamus Mulaski, who was our blue collar player of the week last week, uh, playing both ways, defensive end and tight end. This is a Quintel kickoff. This kickoff and all kickoffs are presented by Quintel Incorporated, specializing He is tripped and fell at the, looks like about the six yard line. So it's going to be some rough field position for the Bulldogs as they come out on the offense. So that's Jermont Bogard for the Pirates. Well, you always got to read the guy's name when he falls down, huh? Well, <laughs> well I know, with the ball though. Yeah. It's like the only time the long snapper's name gets read is when he snaps it over to, over to the punter's head. By the way, Quintel Incorporated handling jobs of all sizes throughout the country since 1994. So a big thank you to them for sponsoring all of our kickoffs in today's ball game between number one Crown Point and number two Maryville Pirates. Happy to have this one underway. Dante Pope will take the opening snap. And it's going to be number two, J.Q. Johnson. And he's going to jut ahead for just a couple of yards. and It is incomplete. As, as number 12 for the Pirates caught the ball, he got lit up a little bit late on the pass for from Pope to his receiver. I was making a quick change to our... Uh, oh, here we go. I was making a quick little change. We had one uh, oh, he's, misprint on my part. So we had the running back, uh, uh, J.Q. Johnson, on our depth chart. Had the, too I wanted, bad, too I, bad the other guy that wasn't here used to do that, that we would uh, be railing on him. <laughs> Just helping you out. So you, yeah, uh, I you appreciate it. Throw out to the left. Pass is complete, but just a couple of yards out beyond the 10-yard line up to about the 11. Yeah, John Peters runs a little uh, quick slant route, and then you've got uh, Landon Dillich, number 11, catching it, number 11, making a tackle. So it's going to be third. Hearing, all the numbers are same for you. Yeah, right? third, third and about five. Now you see the, looks like the Crown Point's lining up man-to-man -man in the secondary. Looks like they're walking up a couple linebackers here. Should, should be interesting to see which linebackers are blitzing. So Crown Point comes with about four or five. The throw to the left. Pass is complete. It's caught by Zamir Martin. It will not be enough for a Pirates first down. They were trying to get to the 16 yard line so it'll be fourth down coming up here yeah Zamir Zamir caught the ball and immediately making the tackle was Jacob Jones good defense right there they knew they were going to run a short pass route and they covered him extremely well a little bump coverage nobody going deep so the quarterback had to get rid of it right away they had a couple guys blitz and they blitzed two so they ran rushed five in a three 
five look. Darren Wiggins is there, the punter for the Pirates. Wiggins the punt. And this one is in the air. It's going to be taken right around the 40-yard line, and that's exactly where it's going to be caught by Landon Delich. Yeah, nice job by the Bulldogs flipping the field right there. You know, when they when they chose the coin toss and went to defer, that, that the paying dividends right now. So Crown Point will take over offensively, much like we saw last week, Jay, in great field, this great starting field yes. position for the Bulldogs, starting right at their own. 40-yard line. Right, here we, go. we gave you that Gladish Law Group starting lineup again. Up front, it's going to be Elias Pauviadakis, Jeff Machetti, Nathan Gregory, Austin Rivera, and Paul Clark on your offensive line. Noah Ehrlich in at quarterback with Larry Ellison in, in the backfield. And off is to Ellison, who runs out to the left. He runs ahead out across the 35. Oh, picks up quite a few yards. Six yards on the run to start things up for Larry Ellison. Your wide receivers again, Cam Sorcy, Landon Delich, and Nick Soley, along with the tight end, Seamus Malaski as well. Yeah, nice job right there. You saw Austin Revere, number 75, pull all the way from his right guard position, all the way past the tackle on the left-hand side, and got us sealed into the inside and sealed those linebackers up. We did a nice job right there. Here's the snap, handoff to Ellison again, who... Runs ahead up to the 30, and it looks like he might mark it. The far official has it just a little bit short. The near side official has it right on the 30-yard line. So depending on where they spot it, this could be a first down. And it looks like they are they're right up on the line. They are ready to go. Crown point going no huddle here. So they do they they don't give them the first down. They're looking to see if yep. they move. We've got an it, official's timeout here, it looks like. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna bring the sticks out. It looked like the official on the far side near the sticks. Sort of, oh, and now they just gave it to him right there. They didn't bring the they didn't bring the sticks out. So first down for the Bulldogs right at the 30 yard line. Got just enough, 10 yards, even. On two, yeah, on two, <laughs> on, on two plays. That's all you. I mean, that's all you need to move yep. the sticks. Clock stops on on this as official indicating that as well. Yeah, anytime first down in high school, they stop the clock so they the chains can move and get set. We know in high school things can move a little bit quicker than we're used to. Things can move very quick, especially in a very close game at the end of a game. Yes. Both of these teams are really fast-paced offensively, trying to get the momentum going on their sides early on here offensively. Playing here on the left hash. Clock will run. Four wide receiver, three wide receivers set with Malaski coming in motion here. And now he's going to set up a block as Ehrlich gets hit. But the... Running back, Ellison, runs ahead out across the 30. Well, Malaski did a nice job right there. He came in motion across the field and set the edge right there, kicked out the outside linebacker, and Ellis did a nice job of reading it, cutting it inside. It, only a gain of two, but still positive play. Second down and eight for the Bulldogs at their 28-yard line. So from that left hash again. Sorcy in motion. Ehrlich got hit as he throws, and it was almost picked off. Pass is incomplete. First incompletion of the day for Noah Ehrlich. Well, they tried to set up as the motion man went around Ehrlich. Ehrlich faked the handoff and then tried to set a screen pass, and it looked like Terrell Elmore almost one-handed grabbed that and came up with a huge play for the Pirates early on defensively. Yeah, at least batted it down there and put yes, third did. down in motion here. Well, Elmore, three tackles on the season coming into today. All solos, by the way. Clock winding down, play clock at five. Here's the snap to Ehrlich, looking to his left. He throws, passes over the head of Cam Sorcy, number 83, the 200-pound senior. Yeah, again, right there, El Trey Terrell Elmore, right in the face of Ehrlich. Orlick had to throw that ball a little bit sooner than he wanted to. The wide receiver wasn't out of his break yet and threw it a little high, sailed it over even the defensive back on that one. I think that play, he was trying to get rid of it just so he didn't get didn't get hit. So question for you here, if you're Coach Pazia, is this four down territory yes. for you? Or do you... Uh... Well, it depends on how much you like your field goal kicker. If you want points early on... Which we haven't, uh, according to our information, Brewer hasn't attempted a field goal yet. May try to draw the defense off sides here on fourth down for the Bulldogs. We'll see. Here's the snap. 
He's going to try to pass. Ehrlich out to his left. Pass is caught up to the 20. It's going to depend on where he marks it. He's marking it right at the 20. Gibbs with a great catch right there. Extends his arms out all the way. Ehrlich, well, he's, he's just throwing everything a little bit high early on here. If he'd have thrown that one down just a little bit, Gibbs could have caught that and ran for a lot more. Yeah, Trey Gibbs doing a great job making that one. Yes, he did. To come down at the 20-yard line there, and that's right where the stick marker is. And the officials are saying it's going to be an official's timeout. They may bring the chains this out. This time they may bring the chains out. Yeah, you said that last time, and it didn't happen. <laughs> Hey, I got a score update. Hit me with the... That's the Shrek and Van Til hometown scoreboard update for you. Hey, we, hey, we got one. I got, a, I got one of our spies out at the Highland game. Highland is up 6 to nothing. A 63-yard pass play on the opening drive. Hold on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Hanover on the next possession scores in three plays. Tied up 6-6. Six, six. I'm assuming Hanover is about to attempt the extra point, so we'll wait on that uh, further update. It's going to be a wild one at, uh, at Highland tonight. Should be fun. Hanover in their, new, in their new conference. It's always fun when new teams join here, and we'll see the mark here from the official as the chains have been brought out. And it is going to be... First it, down. It's, it is gonna, it is, it's going to be a turnover on downs. They're going to say it is not a first down for the Crown Point Bulldogs as the official indicated the other way. So Maryville will take over at the 20-yard line. Uh, that, that one was inches. I mean... the game That is the game of inches, right? It uh, certainly is. We talk about yards a lot, but here, here's, <laughs> here's where it comes down to inches. So now all of a sudden the Maryville Pirates will take over at the 20-yard line. I mean, that's a big momentum boost. Yes, I mean, it is. I mean, I can't... I mean, I'm, I don't know the exact number offhand, but how many times has Crown Point not come down on their opening drive and scored a touchdown? Not this year yet. So Dante Poe back in the saddle, hands off to his running back, J.Q. Johnson, who gets stopped, maybe got a yard, or again, maybe just got a couple of inches, but it looks like the officials are saying he got right back to the line of scrimmage, so no yards gained on the play. Yeah, nice job right there. Mark Gonzalez shedding off his block and getting into the backfield, making contact right at the line of scrimmage, and it looks like, he, yeah, you're right. Well, they're marking it back. It's going to be second down and 10. So Gonzalez with the big play right there at his nose guard position. Two tackles on the season. They get three now. <laughs> that quick math, you know. Eight seconds on the play clock. Here's the snap. Pope looking to pass. He looks to air it out down the field to the left. Pass is incomplete. Really nice coverage. Jalen Kelly right there, number 10 for the Bulldogs. Step for step with the wide receiver from Maryville and had, you know, it's, it's like, you know, that's when it comes down to be a rebound right there. He came down with good inside position. The ball was just, just a little bit late on the release by Pope. Should have thrown it sooner and let his receiver try to run underneath it, but John incomplete. Peters. John Peters was that intended target, okay, thank by you. the way. Yep. There's a little 11-10 matchup there for you down the <laughs> down the field. Again, from the left hash, it's third down for the crown, or for the Maryville Pirates, third and 10. Pope looking to air it out, dumps it down, and the pass is incomplete. Tackle. Number 44. 44. That is Drew Cole. So that'll be his seventh tackle of the season. Tried to set up the screen pass right there, and Kroll from his linebacker position read it perfectly, made contact with the running back just as he was able to make contact. Pope drew the defensive line in. Did a nice job of stepping, over, throw, stepping up high and throwing it over to defensive line, but great coverage right there by Kroll. Darren Wiggins back to, or is going to be the punter for Maryville and back to receive Delich or Jacob Jones. Here's the punt. It's a low liner. Delich catches it around the 45. He's going to run out to the right, out across the 40, out across the 35, gets to the 30 before he is taken out of bounds. So it's going to be more great field position to start things up for the Crown Point Bulldogs. Couldn't take advantage of it last time. Hopefully this time in their eyes and their fans here, which, by the way, stands are packed. Yes, they are. I got here, at, I got here an hour before kickoff, and I had to park in the far lot all the way on the other side of the school. He had to park in St. John's. <laughs> well, I could have, then I could have just parked at uh, school today. <laughs> 
So Crown Point will take over here at the 30. Still no score as the clock winds down. We've got 7.05 left here in the opening quarter. Lots to cover in this one today. One and two matchup. Here's a little reverse flip here to Jacob Jones out to the right who runs ahead, has some room, and in for the touchdown! Or did he step oh, no, out of he's bounds? Oh, no, he's going to be stepped out of bounds. It looks like at about the two-yard line. He went diving for the pylon, but he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, as you said, Jay, right around the two-yard line, it looks like, says the official on that near side. So we'll save the touchdown for just a moment. But what a run. Starting at the 30, running it down all the way down to the two. So a 28-yard Pitch to Jacob Jones all the way down to the two. And, and Soli, number four, came behind Ehrlich. They faked the pitch to him, and then the other guy came around and got the pitch and went back the other way. Nice little reverse play. And now touchdown. Ellison. Ellison is in for the Bulldog touchdown. And just like that, crown point on the board. Wasn't on the opening drive, but... It's Soon enough for Coach Buzia. So we will await the extra point. Oliver Brewer is your kicker. The holder is Noah Erdlich, Carson Granger, the long snapper. So Brewer looking to go nine for nine. It's a low kick. Erdlich looking to pass. And it's going to be incomplete. So the snap was bad. Erdlich couldn't control it. So the PAT is no good. So it's 6 nothing in favor of the Bulldogs. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. You're listening to Game Day here on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Hi, I'm Crowell Company Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company, the insurance professional in Holland, Maryville, and Michigan City. Welcome back to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel. And we've got another Quintel kickoff. Kickoff and all kickoffs are presented by Quintel Incorporated, specializing in the reconditioning, repair, and remanufacturing of heat exchangers. So Brewer will kick things off. And back to receive. They're turned at such an angle I can't read the numbers. <laughs> and of course. That's nice of why, them. Why make it easy on, on the broadcaster? Returner gets it. That's number 23 who juts ahead and is taken down for the Maryville Pirates. That is Javion Gills. So we've seen the 28-yard run from Jacob Jones to the Crown Point Bulldogs. Could be a very yes. early candidate for our proud Union Home Play of the Game presented by IKORCC. Learn more at IKORCC.com. There you go. Good job there, <laughs> Mr. Bradner. <laughs> But that was a that was great trickeration right there. They had the back coming in, uh, or the wide receiver coming in motion, faked it to him. Another, the receiver from the slot come on around on the other side. The defense momentum was going one way. Great job of Jacob Jones on the on the run. Interesting setup here. Only two wide receivers out near the lines as Pope takes this one, hands it off. And jutting ahead, just shy of the 30. They may give, no, it looks like they're going to give him the 29-yard line. They may be just in front of it, in between the 29-yard line and the 30. Yeah, well, you know what? The, right there, uh, Maryville is in more of a running formation. they got one receiver to each side. They've got a tight end to the right. They've got a like a sort of a flex back, fullback type guy. And they're, they're going big, and they want to pound the ball here, it looks like, uh, against this crown point defense. Wear them down a little bit. Get that defense tired for sure as Johnson sets up behind Pope for the I formation. High snap, looks to throw, pass is almost taken by Dom Fanton. 
Yeah, great coverage on the slant route. Looks like he was trying to throw it to number 11. John Peters again. Get my, my starter page is all mixed up here. <laughs> yeah, you're a hot mess over there. Yeah, man. I know. I got papers <laughs> everywhere. You should be a little bit more clean like me over here. Yeah, th that's <laughs> never going to happen. But uh, d Dom Dominic Fanton came in on that play from his linebacker position, tried to bat it down as well. So he had a, a linebacker and a defensive back on the play. Great coverage. In the same formation for Maryville. Well, they got trips to the top side. Three wide receivers at the top, looking to maybe just get some yardage. Dumps it over at the top. And running ahead with plenty of room to run is Peters out across the 40-yard line in his own territory. So Peters with a big run. That's the biggest play of the game so far yeah, for Maryville. Peters was lined up on the right-hand side. They had trips to the left. Peters, the only receiver to the right, ran all the way across the field. And what happened was all the, the trip receivers ran the opposite way. So he ran underneath the three receivers. And his defensive back that was covering him man-to-man -man got washed up in the other defensive back trying to cover their guys. So a great play right there by the Maryville Pirates. Formation again here is wide receivers to the right now. Here's the handoff to Johnson who runs ahead. Gets to about the 45 it looks like. Yep, they're going to mark him right at the 45, so it's a pickup of five. Yeah, nice job of blocking by the offensive line on that left side for the Pirates. Jaden uh, Swanson, the left tackle right there, doing a great job sealing off the edge. Res running back uh, Johnson cuts inside of it. Maryville trying to answer the crown point touchdown a few moments ago. High snap. Little confusion here on the play as Johnson runs ahead. Gets close to that 30-yard line. It looks like the official may... Looks like he's just going to be short. So it was only second down, so it'll be third down and maybe inches coming up here. We'll see what the officials officially mark it at. But a little confusion on the yeah. handoff. Yeah, well, you know what? It, it actually did a good job right there because the defense sort of froze, and when the defense froze like that, uh, Johnson was able to find a little seam to the left-hand side right over to guard and pick up four yards on it. So it's going to be fourth down and about a half a yard. Third down. I'm sorry, third down. Johnson gets the ball. is stopped behind the line. 21. That's going to be Nate Kolk. Yeah, defensive end, 6'2", 220, just darted in there. Almost got the handoff. He was in there so quick. He must have been in the offensive huddle on that one. But he was. He read that play perfectly. It's going to be fourth down, and it looks like about three yards here. Big conversion down for the Pirates. That's a big eighth total tackle, and then he had a sack on the season. That's going to be a tackle for loss. Play clock under ten. Trying to run ahead, and it looks like it's going to be short for the Pirates yet again. Yeah, number one and 21 coming up big for the Crown Point Bulldogs. That's Will Clark and Nate Clack making the tackle short of the first down. One, one linebacker, one defensive end coming up big right there for the Bulldogs. Like I said earlier in the broadcast, we talked about linebackers can be blitzing from anywhere in that 3-5 defense, and Will Clark blitzed right into the play. Will Clark, 13 total tackles on this season coming into tonight. Certainly one of those senior leaders for yes. the Crown Point defense that gets a lot of accolades. Well, the Bulldog defense only giving up seven points a game. Yeah, they've given up seven points each of their last two weeks. So, Crown Point offense taken back over. The handoff is to Larry Ellison, who runs ahead. As the ball was started at the 29, and all of a sudden he's going to be tackled back, but his forward momentum is going to carry him for a little bit. Yeah, nice job. The offensive line getting a good surge right there to straight ahead base blocking, get about five, six yards on first down. You always got to like that. Up to the 37-yard line from the 29, so. Yeah, it opens up that playbook on second down and four or five. You got the whole playbook open. You can do anything you want offensively. So we have the two wide receivers here to the near side. Ellison going to run ahead out across the 40 before he's tripped up. So we're going to have about third down and about one and a half. If you're tracking at home. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs>
Well, that was Austin Revere again pulling from the right side. The running back chose, Larry Ellison chose to cut inside of his block, but if he, I think if he'd have stayed with Ellison, there might have been a lane to the outside. How hard is it as a running back to really, I mean, you, you kind of have an idea of where you want to run from the beginning of the run, but how hard is it in those instants to really see those seams and see those holes as Ellison again juts ahead and gets the first down up to the 45. Yeah, it's it's an instant decision. You, you What you do is you look for the guy that's pulling in front of you, you look for his jersey. If you see his number, you cut inside of it. You, you don't see any number, you cut around the outside of it. Okay. But so, I mean, it's that's about as simple as you can draw it up. Because it's, it's a split decision on the run for running backs. That's what, to me, it feels like as you're, you know, you're handed off the ball, you don't know how your line's really going to be moving, guys. It's right. kind of like a, a pitch in baseball. You have, like, half a millisecond to really think about what you want to do. Wide receivers, two to the left side here. Hand off to Ellison again, who gets stopped initially. Makes a turn around the side. Has room to run. And up to the 40. He didn't officially go down. And so out across the 40. Ball fumble. Is they out. call fumble. Let's see what they call. Was he down? Maryville seems to think that they have the ball. Was he down on the initial fall, though, because he made some contact with John Peters originally. Peters just kind of threw a shoulder into him. Yeah, nobody tried to wrap him up. All they did was hit him with the shoulder pads, and it, Brad Cease is. And it looks like Maryville is going to take over. Brad so Cease was jumping up and down just a second ago. Now he's excited. He was yelling at the officials. And now Coach Bezia looks like he's going to have a conversation with the officials, and it's going to be kind of a heated conversation. And, and we, we got do a, have flag. a flag. And the Boo Birds are out here on yes, the front side. Yes, they are. And you know, I, I understand the argument that Coach Bazia may have with, with, the, with a call here on this, but you've already turned the ball over. Now you're going to give Maryville an even better shot of moving the ball down the field, though. Yep, they're going to, it's, if, uh, it's a, going to be a personal foul on the sideline. See what they call here. See if they give them the timeout first. Unsportsmanlike conduct, first down for the Pirates. So that's going to be 48 yard line. Yeah, it's going to be pretty big. That's going to be some of the best field position for the Pirates today. Pirates got some momentum last last series, moving the ball, mixing it up with some pass and some run. Let's see what they come out and do here. A great field position. And that's probably what got Coach Pizzi a little bit more hot. He knows yes. there is some momentum building on that crown or on that Miraville sideline. He doesn't want to help him out anymore, but. Getting that penalty flag didn't help. Yeah, and, and on top of it, you know, Ellis, you know, tried to extend the play, took a couple big hits, and ball popped out. Pope keeps, runs ahead out to the 50-yard line, and he's going to get tackled beyond that. You, you got a fired-up side over here on the Crown Point crowd side. They are a little angry, so they're taking it out. <laughs> they liked when that contact was made, so a pickup of two yards on the run from Pope. Yeah, a big set of downs right here for the Crown Point defense. Quick transition. They, they did a nice job on that first play. Let's see if they can answer the bell here. Looks like Maryville is going to be adjusting their play as they look to see what Crown Point is doing defensively here. They'll make their adjustments, get up to the line here. We're going to see the ends start to switch up a little bit here. Malansky and Kolk have switched sides. They've got five seconds left on the play clock. Down to three. And we have a whistle, and it'll be a timeout. So we'll step aside for one minute. You are listening to game day here on the, or game night here on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. One minute should be good. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. 
thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel. We got second down and eight coming up here for the Maryville Pirates, who are building a little bit of momentum. The handoff is to, or the snap is to Pope, and a big tackle. It's going to be a tackle for loss, and that's, of course, the senior, Will Clark. Coming in from the linebacker position. Yeah, nice job right there. Crown Point defense is stepping it up here big time, again, especially against this running game of the Maryville Pirates. So the drive started at the 48. They had initially gotten two yards, and now they go back to the 46-yard line. So third down and 12 coming up here. We've got three wide receivers to the all to the right side, maybe one to the top, so four. I beg your pardon. Empty backfield. It's going to be Pope. Now we got five wide receivers, three to the bottom, one to the top. Pope running, at, trying to get out of trouble, and he's going to be tackled at the 45. Good job right there by the secondary. That's a secondary pass uh, sack right there because Pope had plenty of time to find somebody open down the field. Who slid, did a nice job of sliding his feet out of the pocket. And then just all of a sudden, finally, one of the defensive linemen got to him. But that's, a, that, that's what they call a coverage sack right there. So I have a whistle, and that's going to be the end of the first quarter. So we're going to step aside for a minute. You are listening to game night here on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Growing up in Northwest Indiana, I am proud that my family's been doing business here for nearly 100 years, which started with my grandfather, John Gladish. Over my career, I've witnessed families being torn apart by the negligence of others and everything from unguarded openings at construction sites to reckless driving on our roads. Our experienced attorneys, paralegals, and staff know that insurance companies and their lawyers will go to great lengths to avoid paying compensation. Do not waste your one and only opportunity to seek fair compensation for your loss. Give the Gladish Law Group a call and put our team to work for you. Since 2000, Hose Connections in Hammond has been a premier leader in the hydraulics industry. Hose Connections is a one-stop shop offering quality hydraulic and pneumatic products and services. Hose Connections takes pride in not only meeting, but exceeding customers' expectations. To learn all about the products and services that Hose Connections offers, visit HoseConnectionsInc.com or call 219-844-6570. Hose Connections in Hammond, proven under pressure. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. The punt is away for the Pirates. Delich will take it. He will signal for a fair catch out across the 20. So this will be, uh, we'll, we'll call it the worst starting position that Crown Point's had tonight <laughs> to, to start a drive. We would like to remind you and remind everyone that video of tonight's game is presented by American Community Bank with locations in Cherryville, Crown Point, Dyer, Hammond, and Munster. American Community Bank is Northwest Indiana's local neighborhood bank. Visit acbanker.com to find out more information. We will also name a Crow Company's Lantern Man superhero of the game. The Crow Company is proud to recognize the superheroes on the gridiron. Yeah, right now, it's uh, you know leaning towards Ellis, but it's early. Yeah, Ellison is having himself a nice... A nice game here so far. Larry Ellison, the junior. That's going to be a nice thing for Crown Point here. you got a quarterback and a running back that are both juniors. As oh, yes, Ehrlich definitely. Looking to throw. Pass is caught by Delichet across the 30. Gets to the 40. Tripped up at about the 45 before he's finally tackled. Big gain yeah, for nice, the Bulldogs. Yeah, nice job, Ehrlich, right there. Sitting in the pocket, taking his time. Great job by the offensive line to give him that time. And he found a dart right over the middle of the field. Trey Stevens in on that tackle as you know, more shirts being thrown into the crowds. Maybe we can get one this week, Jay. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm banking on it. I think they're extra small, so it may not fit you. Nope. <laughs> Got three in the backfield. 
Yeah, flanked on either side, handoff. We thought it was to Ellison. It looks like Ehrlich may have kept, though. Gets about to the 49 as they were at the 48. So this will be second down here. Yeah, nice job. And the quarterback right there is just trying to read the defense, see what is going on. He had a, a back running back behind him with pistol and two, two running backs either side. So he had a couple guys in front of him to block. And Ehrlich decided to take it. He doesn't look like he's really comfortable running the ball on a running play, but he is great at scrambling and extending the play. So let's see what happens. Coming into this, coming into this game today, four rushes for 14 yards. So yeah, not as mobile as, as some quarterbacks may be. Prefers to be one of those passer quarterbacks. Keeps, runs to the left to try to get something out of the play. Darts ahead and the pass is gonna be incomplete. Well, nice job of Terrell Elmore. We've said his name several times tonight in terms of pass rushing, and he did a nice job flushing Ehrlich to one side. His receivers, he was on the left hash, and the receivers seemed to be running across the field away from him, so Ehrlich had nobody to throw to on that sideline. It's going to be so it's going to be third down. Third down and eight from the 50. So from midfield, trying to get up to the 42-yard line. This could be a big momentum builder for Maryville if they can get a big stop here. Ehrlich going to air it out, or going to give it up to Jacobs right around the 50. Tries to make a turn around the edge, and he's going to get swarmed. It's not going to go down, and we do have a flag on that the play. looks like it's going to be a face mask on the Pirates. That's going to be a huge... Now we'll see what the official call is, but it looked like there was contact uh, with a hand and a helmet right there, so... Yeah, the initial tackle, Jay came in. Came in from Roshan McGee. Kind of missed that initial tackle, so Jones was able to step up. Yeah, incidental contact on the helmet. Looks like he didn't pull it, just his hand sort of was on it, but didn't pull, so it's a five yard face masking call. Good job by the officials right there to make sure they didn't call too hard of a penalty on the, on the Pirates for that incidental contact. Well, you go from third and eight, now you're third and three here. So that's a huge pickup for the Bulldogs. A little bit more manageable on third as Ellison makes the turn around the left, has room to run, gets out to the 30 before he's tackled down by a plethora of Pirates. Yeah, nice job right there of... That is Eli Elias Paviadakis. Paviadakis did a great job opening up the hole, sealed the the defensive lineman to the inside and Ellis did a great job reading that bounced it to the outside and got the first got the first down and then some it looks like the ball is going to be spotted on the 20 yard line we got a pirate down looks like a, a cramp or of some type I gotta make a, a correction here Ela Papiadakis my apologies yeah Papiadakis did a great job right there setting the edge I mean it was it was a great great job right there Let's uh, let's you got get a check and down till hometown scoreboard update for us. Yeah, just a couple here. We've got Valparaiso Vikings twenty-one, Laporte zero. That's in uh, second quarter. So our game's just a you know just a hair behind everybody else. We've got Michigan City Wolves fourteen, Chesterton zero. Also in the second quarter. And we've got Calumet, six. East Chicago, nothing. That's in the first quarter. Well, as we continue to roll on here, Boone Grove, 21. Gary Westside, nothing. The great Daryl Skabinski back in the RSN studio, the Centurion Bank Studios doing all these. Uh... Yeah, we appreciate it. Griffith and Hammond Central, zeros. That's looks like in the first quarter. Surprising that Hammond Central, they've been pouring points on the board yes, left and yes, right. Uh, and then we got our last one, Elkhart 21, Morton 20. And that's in the third quarter because they're playing out of, towards South Bend. So starting a little bit earlier. Yep. So it's a first down here for the Bulldogs. They'll pick it up at the 30-yard line. A little wildcat play here as Ellison... Took the snap and tries to run, but we do have laundry on the field. We've got holding against the Bulldogs, so that'll bring it back. 
Yeah, that, that play just seemed to be going nowhere from the outset. Nobody thought that uh, Ellis was going to pitch it to uh, Ehrlich. So it's going to be... Okay. But did I say something wrong? Did you were calling I, him El it's Ellison. Oh, did Ellis. I say Ellis? Yeah, oh, Ellis. Oh, my fault. Sorry. No, I'm just... Uh, hey, I appreciate I was it. I was trying to do it without really calling you out on the yeah, air for it. Go ahead. Call it out. I was trying to help you. Call so it out. So Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Ziska would... <laughs> he go, there's another running back in the game? <laughs> so Ellison, Ellison with the yeah. fake pitch to Ehrlich... And that play was designed to go nowhere. Ellis in the 5'9", 165 running back, 165 pound running back. The junior, here's Ellison again running forward. And obviously a lot to make up here as it was first down and 20. So trying to just get some of that yardage back. Yeah, looks, yeah they just picked up uh, about, four, about three or four yards right there. So it's going to be third down and 17. Let's see if uh, Coach Bazzi is going to cut the cut the down and distance in half here and then go forward on fourth down. I mean, if you pick up about eight or nine yards, oh, second down? Oh, because of the penalty, my fault. Thank you. Um, but again, you want to cut the cut it in half, get about eight or nine on this play, get another eight or nine on the third down. Three wide receivers, one in motion. That's solely looking to throw down the field. Ehrlich going to try to run off to the right edge. Gets crossed the 45, or the 35, excuse me, and is taken out of bounds right around the 30. So he was very, he's very close to potentially picking up that first down. They may have given him the 29. We'll see where they spot the ball here. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be second or third down and nine. Well, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. He needs to get to the 20. Excuse yep. me. I was looking at the, it, uh, that's the initial stick. <laughs> Trey Steffens on the, uh, Comes out of nowhere from his linebacker position to close the distance down. Ehrlich looked like he had a big play in front of him. And Trey Steffens, I said, uh, number 14 for the Pirates, come out of nowhere and close that play off to make it third down and nine. Six one senior coming in there. So from the right hash, Ehrlich flips it. Jones tries to get out of the tackle, and it's going to be a tackle for loss here by James Veal. Yeah, Veal was not faked out at the, on that play at all. They tried to run a reverse, and Veal stayed at home. He's in his left uh, defensive end position, and nowhere for the running back to go. So they had third down and 10 to go. Now it's going to back him up five more yards. So it's fourth down and 15, and there's no decision yet. As to, It looks like the offense stand out there on the field. Gibbs coming in. This is where usually Gibbs starts to shine. Number 39 for the Crown Point Bulldogs, Trevor Gibbs. And Ehrlich will boot this one and try to keep it out of the end zone and trying to land, but it looks like we're going to keep it. No, they are going to mark it at the one-inch line. And in that front was of the number 83 for the Bulldogs. That's Cam Sorcy. So he keeps it out of the end zone. Yeah, what Ehrlich. a great job. That was gorgeous. I mean, he had the sense enough to run to the to the end zone, turn around, find the ball, and just at the last second, as the ball was in the air, catches it and makes sure his body doesn't touch the end zone. And it's going to be first down and 99 and a half yards to go, 99 yards to go for the Pirates. That good the, starting that, field position. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, we <laughs> talked about the Bulldogs having their worst. This is certainly about as bad as it can get for the Maryville Pirates in terms of starting position. Yes. The good thing for them, though, here in the second half is, or in the second quarter is, I mean, there's 8.03 left. They're only down 6 nothing. It's not like this is a blowout game at the moment. Now, they've, they've got to get a first down here to give the punter some room. Well, maybe they're going to come downfield and try to get a touchdown, Mr. Simmons. Yeah, well, that would even be better. Pope with Johnson... Behind him now as they are pretty midway through the end zone here. Pope is going to keep. He throws ahead, and pass is incomplete. Looks like a mix-up in the backfield right there. The running back went behind Pope and was no help in terms of protection. There was a line, defensive lineman right on Pope as he threw it, and the receivers ran like two-yard hitch routes and well covered. 
So John Peters was the intended target, but couldn't get that, and that was only going to be at the, about the two-yard line. Yeah, so. it was only a minimal gain. So second down coming up here. It'll be still second and 10 as they're trying to get to the 11-yard yeah, line. Yeah, I mean, it, I would run a quarterback sneak, but you can't run that out of a shotgun. So in the shotgun, hands off to Johnson, who juts ahead, gets to about the... Three-yard line, maybe. Maybe up to the four. We'll see if they... Yep, looks yep. like they move it up to the four-yard line. So a pickup of three officially. Yeah, nice job that offensive line just getting a good push and getting some yards out away from that uh, goal line for the Pirates. So it'll be third down and seven coming up. Yeah, it looks like the Pirates are going to go in a passing formation offensively. they got two receivers to each side. You've got Pope and Johnson in the backfield. Along this near hash for the Pirates, Pope in the backfield. And they're coming with some pressure. Throw out to the left. Pass is going to be, was he out of bounds? And no, they're going to call it a catch. What a great catch right there by Peters. John Peters. Does a nice job. He plants the quarterback sort of like a, a wrong shoulder throw, throws it back behind him. And Peters just does a great job, extends his body and hands, and comes up with a big play for the first down. So out to the 16 now. Yeah, that was really impressive. The question was, did he was he totally in bounds when he caught it? Official says yes. I mean, the official's right there. So again, we got two wide receivers, one to each side. A lot of guys up on the offensive line. Pope. He's going to keep, tries to run to the left. He, they are not fooled on the defense. In there on the tackle is Drew Kroll. Oh, there's a fumble. Fumble on recovered. the play. Fumble and recovered by the Bulldogs. That, that's purely on Pope right there. He, he did not secure the ball once he started to run. And it looks like it was a broken play. And... Griffin, Griffin Van Tischel may have come away with that yeah, one. Yeah, Van Tischel did a great job coming up, sealing off to the outside. But again, Pope had the ball in two hands instead of securing it with one hand. And Turlich, Von Turlich, am I correct on that? Van Tischel. Van Tischel, Van Tischel, sorry. Van Tischel comes up and does a great job stripping the ball out. And a fumble, huge play for the Bulldogs. So now they get their arguably their best starting yes. position to start a drive here. Starting at about the 13-yard line. And we're going to see a lot of movement here at the start of this one. Four wide receivers now who all started on the line have now moved into a formation. Ehrlich throws right down the middle, and Mulaski couldn't keep it in his hands. Yeah, it looked like uh, Mulaski just wasn't ready for it. The ball got there a little bit before he was ready. Ehrlich felt some pressure, had to get rid of it. But a nice job right there. Ehrlich threw it to the open spot. Mulaski got to make that make that catch, though. Yeah, it was right over the top where he was the only guy kind of in that middle part right. of the field. But, like, you know, like you said, they, they had a lot of motion going on, so they spread the field out and went in an unbalanced formation, and Mulaski was on the left-hand side all by himself. So only one right receiver as the guys move across the field as Ellison makes the turn around to the right, runs in! Touchdown, Bulldogs! Ellison with the nice job on the uh, quarterback keeper right there. The I'm, I'm sorry, it's slipping my mind. The formation right there where the running back is the, cool, the wildcat. The wildcat, thank you. Okay, we call it the wild dog. How about that? Oh, in this <laughs> case, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> but Ellison it's gets just the, wild. Yep, yeah, Ellison gets the snap. Just takes off to the right hand side. Goes basically untouched right to the goal line, and then skips in. It looks like they're gonna. Are they going to go for two here yeah, since Ehrlich. it's going to be 12-0? Ehrlich is out there. Yep, they're going for two. And Ellison is out there. Yep, the offense is all out there. So it's a two-point conversion here. Attempt. Jones in motion. Ehrlich throws to the right. Pass is caught, and it's taken out of bounds, or it's knocked out of the hands of the receiver. It looked like Jones. Jacob Jones had it poked away from the back, so it's an incomplete and we'll step aside. You are listening to Game Night on the Region Sports Network. We're going to step aside for one minute. You're listening to the game to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Have you checked out Center Bank Student Checking Account? This no fee checking account is perfect for students and teens aged 14 to 24 and comes with all the features you need to succeed, such as a debit card, digital banking, and automatic deposit. 
Ohio. Send to your bank and help you start establishing great spending habits today for your better tomorrow. For more information, visit SendToYour.com slash food and checking or visit your local branch. If you are under the age of 18, your parent or guardian must also sign in the Sentier student checking account. At the age of 25, your account will automatically convert to the Sentier checking account. You must deposit $25 to open this account. This account is not eligible for overdraft or damage. Member FDIC. Some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room. We see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success. Some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Welcome back to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network. This is a Quintel kickoff. This kickoff and all kickoffs are presented by Quintel Incorporated. The short kick, it'll be picked up around the 30-yard line by the Maryville Pirates. And getting down at about the 25, a little bit of a loss on the return. So Quintel Incorporated handling jobs of all sizes throughout the country since 1994. Connecting the first half of the second half of tonight's game, it's the Hose Connection Halftime Report presented by Hose Connections, proven under pressure. There you go. Is that the pressure sign? That's part. Oh, there you go. So Maryville will take over, trying to answer. It's 12 0 in favor of the Bulldogs. Opening night of PAC action around. Well said. There, there, there's, there's other conferences I gotta at least kind of mention here as well. Johnson gets the ball, runs ahead, only gets a couple of yards if he even gets one at all. And official marks him. And this is mark him right back at the line of scrimmage. So no gain, gonna be second down and ten. And here's one of the we were talking about a junior running back and a junior quarterback for Crown Point. Jake Hugh Johnson having himself a nice season, only a sophomore for this Maryville Pirates squad. Second down and 10 coming up here. Clock winding down, 440 or 545 to go in the opening half. Pope looked to his left, he only has a little bit of time to go. Pass is caught by Peters, but he is tackled out around the 20, so a big loss. Yeah, nice job right there coming out of his defensive back uh, position. Jalen Kelly comes up and makes the tackle for a loss. Looks like about a loss of about four or five on the play. Big down, third down, and 15 for the Pirates. Pirates have had some good things going for them, but just when they needed it the most, they can't get that play that they want. Yeah, they just can't get out of their own way, right? Well, that, in, in week one, I saw Chesterton and Holbert, and it was just a lot of, I mean, neither one of those teams was able to have uh, – feet by the end of it just so many penalties and shooting them in themselves in the foot tonight it's not really that kind of situation it's just really good defense on either side as pope steps up has time to throw looks to air it out it's blocked it's picked up so was it was it caught jordan sanders looked like he came up with it the right tackle jordan sanders is the one that picked it up as there was a block i mean pope had all day to throw yes he did just as he went to throw, somebody got a paw on it, and it looked like they called it a fumble, and a pirate came up with it. So it's going to be fourth down and about 17. Maribel lining up to punt. Aaron Wiggins, along with uh, Giovanni Martinez, is the kicker. Haven't seen him yet today. Wiggins kicks it up in the air. It's a pretty good punt out to near close to the 50-yard line as Delich comes up with that one, and he is tackled immediately. Sort of juggled ju just as yeah. he caught it, and two Pirates were all over him. But, again, great field position for the Crown Point Bulldogs starting at midfield. You would love to be able to milk some of this clock a little bit. I imagine yeah. we'll see some running. Yeah, 404 left in the half, and you want to get, get a score with about, ideally, about about. 20 seconds left so that Maryville Pirate offense doesn't have a chance to come out and score. At the end of the game, you're going to name our Boilermakers Local 374 Blue Collar Player of the Year. That's by Boilermakers Local 374. Earn while you learn with Boilermakers Local 374. Yeah, I remember last week it was uh, Seamus Molaski, tight end spla slash defensive end. Ellison will run ahead out across the 50, close to the 45. So it's going to be a pickup of about four yards on the play. As I said, they want to milk some of this clock to go into the half without without having to worry about the Pirates getting the ball again. And 
Jeb, that they're coming up. They got 30 seconds left on the play clock. Doesn't seem like they're worried at all. Oh, they want to get this play going. It looks like from all appearance, other than they're going to try to milk it. They kind of wind the clock down, and then they're going to pick up a yard here. So third down and five coming up from the Pirates 40, or from the uh, Bulldog 45. Yeah, big play, big conversion down here for the Bulldogs. If they don't get it, I would I would say if it's fourth down and five, if I'm Crown Point, I definitely got to punt it. Yeah, you want to try to, I mean, you've already seen trying to pin them early. Let's try to, you know, kick, keep it at the one-yard line for the Pirates. Well, faked here as it gives, it's just given to Soli, who runs ahead, gets the first down on the far sideline. He's taken out of bounds on the far sideline. That was Jaden Mason in on the tackle. Yeah, 25 yard pickup right there for Nick Soley. Another little reverse play on the on it right there. Ehrlich gets the snap, looks to the right. Soley comes in motion at the beginning of the play and bounces around Ehrlich and he just flips on the ball. Almost like a little Statue of Liberty play action going on. Soley came in to tonight, number one receiver in terms of yardage. In the region. Yeah, he's definitely picking up a lot of yards rushing tonight. Hand off. Ellison runs ahead down the middle on that far hash from where the Bulldog team is. Yep. Offensive line doing a nice job right up the middle, just getting a little bit of a push right there, running the ball on first down. Two minutes and 30 seconds left in the half. Second down and about seven. That's what they've got on the board. How you doing, Emmett? You ready to go? Look at you. You got that. I mean, you got yes. that board down pat. Yeah, well, yeah, it's like, I can't see it. Well, first I, off, your I binoculars gotta, are. I've bigger. got to use the binoculars. I say your binoculars are almost as big as your head. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is a fake handoff. This time it goes to Soli again. He's going to get tackled immediately on the play. Maribel able to yeah, read that one. Yeah, it looks like a loss of about two yards. They pulled the center and the left guard, brought him to the right-hand side. And the Pirate defensive linebackers just stepped up right inside of the, the pulling lineman and filled it up and took him down for a loss. So we're going to have third down coming up here. They're trying to get to the 10. They're at the 18. Now it looks like uh, Coach Buzia taking his time getting that play in as the play clock gets to under 15 with a minute 38 left in the half. All right, I'll tell him I said hi. All gas. And we've got a whistle. And it looks like timeout taken, and we'll take it with him. We're going to step aside for one minute. You're watching Game Night of the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. up on my sick day, Jet. <laughs> Welcome back to Game Night. Built by Von Tobel here on the Region Sports Network. We're going to have the Hose Connection Halftime Report coming up for you in just a few moments. Got a buck 34 left to go in this opening half. Bulldogs are knocking on the door for one more score before the end of the half. We want to remind you that you are Watching, listening to RSN Game Night pre coverage presented by Von Tobel. Von, Tolder, Von Tobel building better together. So from that far hash, it's third down and eight for the Bulldogs. Ehrlich looking to throw, has pressure, throws it ahead, and it's almost intercepted. So we'll have fourth down here, and if you you already said it earlier, you think if you're Coach Bazia here, you might go punt here. Or no, well, it's well that we were talking about that on the 35. Far, 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 farther back. We, okay. We're uh, we're on the 19 right here. 
the clock has stopped on the incompleted pass, so uh, one minute and 29 seconds left. I almost said a buck 29 like you did. Uh, What's wrong with a buck 29? That, is, that works, too. <laughs> it, it looks like they're going to run the play clock down, try to figure out what they want to do, see how much they like their field goal kicker. They're slow walking it up to the line. They had stacked receivers both sides. And this play, they've got trips to the right, tight end to the left, running back uh, to the right side of Ehrlich. And it looks like Coach is going to call a timeout here. So we'll have another timeout. We'll take it with him. We'll take 30 seconds this time. You're listening to Game 9 of the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4ajobdoneright.com. Develop skills that will last for a lifetime with an apprenticeship with the Bricklayers and Allied Craft Workers Local 4, Indiana, Kentucky. The apprenticeship and training program is committed to developing highly skilled bricklayers, terrazzo workers, and ceramic tile setters to provide the construction industry with the best hands in the business. If you are currently working non-union and want better pay with benefits, or if you think learning a new skill with a paid apprenticeship while you earn your associate's degree is the right path for you, visit BACLocal4.org slash training to learn more about the apprenticeship program. Are you built to succeed? Welcome back to Game Down here on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel. Fourth down here for the Bulldogs, trying to keep the drive alive. Ehrlich running to his right, trying to find an open man. He does around the 10 yard line. Pass is caught. It's Delich. See where, see where they mark it. It looks like it's right at the nine yard line. So that is. That would be good for a first down if that's where they mark it. It is a first down for the Bulldogs on fourth down and eight. Great job. Ehrlich getting outside of the box right there, getting outside of the pocket, rolling out, rolling out, holding on to the ball as long as he possibly could, letting his receiver run that out pattern. He did another run yep. as well, which is impressive. Yes, it was. Dead run, but he did a nice job. He squared his shoulders up to the line of scrimmage and released a bullet. 122 left. Ehrlich keeps, throws to his right, passes complete, and knocked out of bounds. Looked like Nick Soley there on the reception, so knocked out about the two or three yard line there. Yes, Soley. you have a pirate down at midfield. Yes, Soley was in on the left hand side. They ran Allison, a play action fake to the left. Soley was lined up at the left hand side, ran all the way across the field into the flat, and made a nice catch. Looks like they're going to, where are they going to spot that ball at? It looks like about the three, three yard yeah. line. I was trying to see if I saw a number from... Uh, it just looks like a cramp or something out there. Yeah, it might One be. of the Pirates. Well, as a reminder, we do have some awards we're going to hand out at the end of this one. We've got the Crowd Company's Lantern Man Superhero of the Game. Brought to you by the Crowd Companies. They're proud to recognize the superheroes on the gridiron. Yeah, we got right, the right now, we've got a bunch of guys that, uh, especially for the Bulldog offensively, you've got, you got Soli, you've got Ehrlich, you've got Allison. So those guys right now... Looking in contention. Delich has made a couple of nice catches. Yes, he did. I mean, that last play to keep the the drive alive. And then for Maryville, you got some, some opportunities potentially. And then we've got the Brown Union Home Play of the Game presented by IKORCC. I C. I don't know what stands out to you as one of those. Yeah, well, that one play, the 28-yard the run uh, with a little... Uh, uh, reverse action on the on the first scoring drive for the Bulldogs. He ran it down to the one yard line, and then Ellis punched it in to finish it off. The Allison two uh, two yard run was uneventful. It's it's not one of those plays where you're going to bookmark that one. I think that that other play for 28 yards is among the top. There's a couple of ones I wrote down as well. And then we have our Boilermakers Local 374 blue collar player of the game brought to you by Boilermakers Local 374. Learn about apprenticeships and more. Yeah, I'll tell you what, it's who I like right now is Terrell Elmore for the Pirates. He's been in that backfield all night long. We'll see if he can step up here. Yeah, he needs the... to right here. Big play for 
for the Pirates. Second down. Bulldogs trying to punch it in. Hand off to Ellison, who runs into the end zone. Ellison with the four-yard plunge. That comes at 109 left in the first half. I definitely don't need Ellison on my fantasy team. <laughs> So we'll see if the offense stays out here, if they're going to bring the kicking unit out. We'll see if they can make the two-point conversion. They failed on a PAT. They failed on a two-point conversion. Yeah, you really chase some points here, but, you know, you you got a comfortable lead going into the half. Looks like they're going to go for the two-point They're going to go conversion. for the two. Ellison to the left and is in for the two-point conversion. That'll make it 20 to nothing. So Ellison with the another points on the board. So we're going to step aside. You're listening to Game Night of the Region Sports Network. We'll step aside for one minute on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Flip the switch, a light turns on. Press the button, machines and instruments come to life. Touch the screen, communicate with the world. Simple tasks, guaranteed results. Every second of every day. That's the power of power. And that's the power brought to you by the NECA contractors and electrical workers of Local 531. For over 100 years, Burns Funeral Home and Crematory has been assisting families in their time of need. Serving Northwest Indiana, the staff at Burns Funeral Home will help guide your family in creating a meaningful ceremony. From a simple to elaborate, to traditional or unique. The caring family at Burns Funeral Home will tailor a ceremony to fit your needs. And for your other loved ones, Burns Funeral now has a pet. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. This kickoff is brought to you by Quintel Incorporated. And it's going to be a low line drive and Maryville's going to stop it at about the 37 yard line, maybe the 38. This is a low line drive kick. Now we'll see if Maryville offensively can get something going here right before the half. They need some momentum coming out here because I think, if I'm not mistaken, Crown Point does start with the ball in the second half. So you are not mistaken. All right, but they so then they need some momentum, some points on the board. They don't want to come out twenty to nothing and Crown Point with the ball to start the second half. So they've got to get get motivated, get moving here quickly. Quintel Incorporated handling jobs of all sizes throughout the country since 1994. All right, with 108 left to play in the opening half, Maryville looking to get something going here. Some momentum going into the halftime locker room. Pope throws to his left, pass is complete out to the 45. That'll be a pretty nice gain. Pass is complete to Zamir Martin. Yeah, just a little hitch route over the middle of the field. A little gutsy job there by the receiver catching it in the middle of those linebackers. Pope again, stepping back, airing it out to the right, and it's going to be out of bounds. Really nice effort out there, just a little too wide. Yeah. Lewis. Yeah, he definitely, there was a very, very tight window for him to catch the ball, and... Pope just overthrew it. He couldn't find anybody open. Threw it up, hoping for a prayer. Good job to live another down. Third down and about four. At the 45, trying to get to the, or maybe the 48-ish, uh, so three or four, depending on. They kind of have it on the other side of the 45, so looking to get four here. Pope still getting a play in. There's five seconds on the play clock. Down to three, two, here's the snap. It's high and tackled immediately. By a host of Bulldogs. Javian Gills on and the run, couldn't get anywhere yeah, on that. Will Clark was the first one to get there, blitzing linebacker and then a couple defensive linemen to help out. Who's gonna be fourth down. Clock is down to 24. Fourth down in about four, three and a half, four yards. Maribel offensively is still on the field. So at the 43, they're trying to get to the 48. So well, the there's only 10 seconds left on the play clock. They're not going to run the punt team out there. Uh, we've got a whistle here. It stops the clock with six seconds left. We'll see our official with the white hat 
in. Made a comment to somewhere on the sideline of Crown Point. And we've got more whistles and may have a timeout taken oh, by the Maryville Pirates. Let's go ahead and keep it here, Jay, on, yes. on this one. What would you like? I mean, you have it's about fourth and five on the play. If, if you're right, because they have the ball. Let's see. Where do they have it marked again? They have it marked at the 43-yard line. So 43. They're trying to get to the 48. I, I think you just you line up three receivers. You get your quarterback to throw it as far as he can. See if you – the Hail Mary. Right. I mean, because you're six seconds into the half. So it's not right. like – I mean, you want more than the first down, obviously. Definitely. But, I mean, you just chuck it up and go for it. You know, if I'm crown point, I line up about five guys at about the 25-yard line or so. Now, if you can get it – with Mel, two seconds left up to maybe... Well, I would think the quarterback, he's going to tell the quarterback, should have let the clock run down maybe one or two more seconds. Tell the quarterback you hold it for at least three seconds, chuck the ball up in the air, by the time that ball hits the ground, it should be halftime. Okay. But in, anyways, the quarterback's going to hold on to the ball to let his receivers get down the field in order to you know try and get a chance for a touchdown. Now, I've liked some other plays where they... Where they they screen pass it and let the lineman get downfield and then let the running back try and score. A lot of those linebackers are guys that normally are in the middle are way in the backfield now. Pope, there's a flag on the play. Pope ahead. Pass is caught. Peters up to the 30. And he's tackled at the 30, but I believe I saw some long. Yeah, could be wrong. it could have been, uh, you know, maybe the offensive lineman jumped or illegal formation. It looked like it was right on the near side, the near side official on the line through the flag. So looks like the half is going to be over as they're yep. telling the Crown Point team to yeah, run into the locker room. Yep, yeah, looked like uh, a legal procedure on the, on the Pirates. So that's going to end the half. All right, so we head to halftime. Host Connections halftime report coming up on the other side. We're going to step aside for about three minutes. You're listening to Game Night of the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. For over 100 years, Burns Funeral Home and Crematory has been assisting families in their time of need. Serving Northwest Indiana, the staff at Burns Funeral Home will help guide your family in creating a meaningful ceremony. From a simple to elaborate to traditional or unique, the caring family at Burns Funeral Home will tailor a ceremony to fit your needs. And for your other loved ones, Burns Funeral now has a pet cemetery and crematory. Visit Burns Funeral Home. Dot com or give them a call at 219-942-1117. Welcome to Public Bar and Rec, located in downtown Crown Point, a place for good games, good drinks, and good food. So come in and make it public. Try to survive zombie dodgeball, score a hole-in-one playing golf, or choose from over 13 multi-sport simulator games while fueling your competition with a variety of appetizers, entrees, and beverages. We have games for all ages with our family-friendly hours till 9 p.m. Reserve your simulator at publicbarandrec.com and let the fun begin. American Community Bank is a local bank serving the Northwest Indiana area exclusively for over a century. A true community bank that is proud to remain a faithful local institution dedicated to being your financial partner throughout life. With branches in Cherville, Crown Point, Dyer, Hammond, and Munster, American Community Bank is a full-service bank serving clients with personal and business banking needs. Visit acbanker.com to find out more about American Community Bank. This box is small, like Pet Supplies Plus. This one is large, like a big box store. In each, Stu, I Stu, has carefully hidden a toy. Question is, which dog will find it first? Moose, no! You were so close! Better Beef of Indiana. Hormone-free, locally raised, and locally processed beef. Better Beef of Indiana is located in Velpo at 2600 Beach Street, where you could buy individual cuts of beef completely raised in Hebron. From single pounds of ground beef to filet mignon, Better Beef of Indiana has it all. Visit their website at betterbeefindiana.com. Follow them on Facebook or call the owner, Kevin, directly at 219-508-5797. Better Beef of Indiana, where quality meets value. 
Lights Team Sports in Valparaiso is a leader in athletics apparel and equipment sales. With in-house production, including screen printing, trophies, embroidery, and more, Blythe's can help you to create the perfect look. For more information, visit them online at teamblythes.com. Blythe's Team Sports in Valparaiso, where the athletes shop. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel. We are officially... In the Hose Connection Halftime Report, brought to you by Hose Connections on Kennedy Avenue in Hammond. Visit them on the web at hoseconnectionsinc.com. Hose Connections, proven under pressure. Do, 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 do. And before we get into oh, the... Oh, man. <laughs> before, listen to that all night. Yeah, just one, a couple more times. <laughs> before we get into uh, too much of what we saw here in this opening half, Mayor Pete Land and the Crown Point Pace Department are proud to support Crown Point Bulldogs football and say, Go Bulldogs! Crown Point remains dedicated to preserving history, celebrating everyday life, providing the best in-city services, and encouraging smart growth. Mayor Land and the Pace team invite everyone to Bulldog Park for a variety of concerts, including Lone Star with special guest Jameson Rogers on September 3rd. That's two days from now. For more information, contact the Pace Department at 219-661-2271. All right, Mr. Simmons, we've seen a pretty decent half yes, of action. Yes, we have. Uh, granted, there's nothing on the scoreboard for the Maryville Pirates, but they've been putting some drives together. They just can't get that final, that, that big play to kind of burst them to get them on the board. Yeah, they, they seem to be their own worst enemy, it seems like, at times. They, they get some momentum going, and then all of a sudden they have a penalty, a turnover, or they can't convert on a fourth down. And it's just they just seem to be not in sync yet offensively. And, you know, and... You know, for them, this is really the toughest defense they've seen so far. They've been gangbusters up to tonight. They've been do averaging 35 points a game. So they've been having their way so far this season. But now they ran into a pretty good defense here by the Bulldogs at 3-5. Linebacker blitzing here, here, there, everywhere. I, I was going to say, I mean... It, yeah, I mean, yes, it's their own undoing to an extent, but it's really, I mean, there's only been a couple of penalties that have really hurt them. Right. It's the conversions that they're having a hard time making, and it's just because Crown Point defense is reading everything very well. Yes, they are. I mean, and it's really not at the fault of the Pirates. I mean, it's just really good defense that they're running into. Yeah, it's a great coaching by, by Crown Point on the defensive side, anticipating where the play is going and executing. These linebackers for the Bulldogs are having an outstanding first half. You got Clark, Quirrell, uh, Gibbs, Fanton. Uh, Fanton, Fanton, and Jones doing a great job. We said all their names at least a couple times tonight on some tackles for losses. The defensive line with uh, Clack. Kulk. Oh, Kulk, I'm sorry. Looks, looked like a seed there. I didn't have my glasses on this. I'm holding. So you got to put the cheaters on. I man. know. On. I got the distance glasses. I need the short ones. Gonzalez and Malaski playing great up front. I mean, those those eight guys right there are just nailing it right here tonight. And the secondary is doing a great job. You know, in some good tight pass coverage on some long plays and some short passes. They they've been playing very well. The whole defense right now. That would be my blue collar player of the week. Not player players of the week. The, the, the defense we just named. Those guys, that unit is by far the best right here on the field out of the four units that you'd be putting on the field. Crown Point defense is showing off tonight. Holding, I mean, holding somebody 35 points a game to zero at half, that's great. And scoring yourself 20, and that's with a failed PAT, a failed two-point conversion. <laughs> so really you're only one, I mean, theoretically you're one point down on the scoreboard from what a right. typical football game would be after three touchdowns. So it's a really off, a great offensive day. I mean, we got... Cam Sorcy doing pretty well. Landon Delich and, and Nick Soley from the wide receiver position. Nick Soley's gotten some good yards, yes. but more from running as opposed to receiving. Yeah, and definitely. Uh, and Jacob Jones with that 28-yard yeah. run also. Our, let's see, what is it? Our I-K-O. I-K-O-R-C-C. Our proud Union Home Play of the game presented by I-K-O-R-C-C. All right, well, let's let's talk about the scoring. I, yeah. I need Ellison on my fantasy football team. A two-yard run. For the first score that came at 6 646 in the first quarter, PAT, bad snap. Ehrlich had to try and throw it into the back of the end zone. Nothing there, so 6 nothing. That was at the end of the first quarter, not a whole lot of scoring. And then Ellison with an 11-yard run. That came at 6 in the second quarter. They went for two, did not get it, so they're up 12 to nothing. And then with 109. Ellison with another short run of four yards, and he was in the uh, wild dog. 
uh, formation. A little play on names, yes, a wildcat yeah. formation. Yes, all right, wildcat formation. But it's going to be the wild dog. I like all it. right, all right, let's go with it. Ellison then scores that. It's puts it's Ellison 18, Maryville nothing. And then on the very next play, a two-point conversion, Ellison scores on a little dive play off of the left side. That means Ellison 20. Pirates, zero, or so, I should say crown point, but Ellison's doing the, he's carrying the load inside the 10-yard line. For sure, he's got the, uh, <laughs> he's the one entering the end zone with the football. Again, we would like to remind everyone that today's video coverage is presented by American Community Bank with locations in Sherryville, Crown Point, Dyer, Hammond, and Munster. American Community Bank in North, is Northwest Indiana's local neighborhood bank. Visit acbanker.com for more information. We're going to step aside for just a moment, step aside for about two minutes. You're listening to Game 9 of the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Are you a builder, remodeler, or homeowner? If so, you need quality materials at the right price. Whether you're just getting started or a seasoned pro, Von Tobel's friendly and knowledgeable staff can help. And since we're 100% employee owned, every time you come in, you're dealing with an owner. We have a great selection for kitchen, bath, flooring, decking, and more. Plus, we offer free design consults to help you with your next project. Scan or visit vontobels.com today to book your free consultation. Von Tobel, building better together. Quintel Incorporated is a family-owned and operated company located in northwest Indiana that specializes in the reconditioning, repair, and remanufacturing of heat exchangers. Since 1994, Quintel has been handling jobs of all sizes throughout the country. Equipped with the most modern technology and advanced tools, Quintel provides top-notch service. When you trust Quintel for all your needs, you'll get peace of mind and a finished job that exceeds your expectations. For more info about Quintel and the services they provide, visit quintel-inc.com. Some see a student athlete working on a shot. We see a powerful lesson in persistence. Some see a student preparing for success on an exam. We see a student athlete preparing for success in life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. When life takes you places and you can't get to the store, shop online with Strack and Van Til to go. Our to go service is easy to use and it can save you time and money. Once your order is in, our own Strack and Van Til team preps your order with care. For delivery or pickup, enjoy the convenience of letting our to go team shop for you. Enjoy your special moments. Sign up online today at shop.strackandvantil.com. <laughs> Welcome back to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel. You're tuned in to the Hose Connections Halftime Report, brought to you by Hose Connections on Kennedy Avenue in Hammond. Visit them on the web at hoseconnectionsinc.com. Hose Connections proven under pressure. Doom, 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 doom. Jay has some Streck and Van Til hometown scoreboard updates for you. Mr. Simmons, you take it away. All right, here we go. Valparaiso 35, Laporte nothing. These are either in the second end of the second quarter or at halftime. I don't think we have one up. Oh, Valparaiso just went to the third quarter. A little, so they're in the third quarter. Chesterton, Michigan City 14. Chesterton 0. That's in the third quarter. East Chicago, Calumet. Calumet 28 to nothing over East Chicago. Boone Grove 28. Gary Westside 12. Hammond Central 27. Griffith 0. Uh, we talked about that Hammond Central offense. They seem to be kicking it in high gear all of a sudden. Uh, let's go and continue on. Elkhart, 28. Morton, 20. I'm going to have to say I have not seen that score pop up, but that is going to be in the late third quarter, early fourth, because they are playing in South Bend. And continuing on, we have New Prairie, 41. Lowell, 6. And just going to halftime, Portage, 13. Lake Central, 7. Wheeler, 7, River Four six, 6, and, and the last one we have is Hanover, 34, oh, and Highland, 13, one more scoreboard update, Hobart, 28, Munster, 7. All right, those are a Strack and Vance Hill hometown scoreboard update for you from the one and thankfully the only Jay Simmons. Yep, oh, and we got a, a scoreboard. Oh, breaking news. Uh, breaking news. I don't know. For Highland, it isn't very good. <laughs> Hanover, 40. Highland, 13. 
There's always a chance. Yeah. Always a chance to come back. Appreciate you. Both teams went in undefeated in that one. Which is, I mean, for, for Highland going in, it's a tough new opponent in your yes. conference. Speaking of tough opponents, that's what the Maryville Pirates have run into here tonight with what is really turning into a buzzsaw here in the Crown Point District. Oh, that's a, the Coach Buzia Buzz. Uh, that's yeah, his nickname. There you go. Th throwing it out there for you. If yeah. you can play with words, I can as well. There you go. But, yeah, I mean, this Crown Point team, I, I was talking to one of the coaches pregame who knows both of these programs very well, and, you know, I, I asked him, I said, okay, before Coach Buzia got here, what were the numbers like? And he said I, somewhere 70s maybe, and then ever since they're about over 100 at this point. I mean, you're growing anywhere from 30 to 40 players in a couple of seasons that Coach Bazia has been here. It's really impressive what he has turned this program into in the last two, three years. Well, yeah, he's a he's a hands-on guy. He's got a great staff. I mean, who doesn't want to play for the Bulldogs? You've got everybody. There's nobody left in the hallways to grab and say, hey, we want you on the team. You've got everybody out there. It's great for the community. You see the community support out here. The stands on the home side are absolutely packed. Yeah, so it it's, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a community event. You look down in both of the end zones outside of the track and fenced area, it's packed. So, I mean, there's, there's probably about uh, seven, 8,000 people here today. Yeah, it's, it's really nice. And, you know, over to our, our left in the distance, it almost looks like they're starting to build like a dirt bike track or something out there. But <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to be, a, I believe, baseball and softball yes. fields is what it's going to turn into. But right now it looks like it could be a road course for oh, a definitely. motocross race or something out there. But that's not too bad. All right, we're going to step aside for just a couple more minutes. We'll step aside for two minutes, in fact, says Mr. Simmons. And we will be back. You're listening to Game Night of the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Hi, I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. From schools to stadiums, hospitals, and bridges, everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. Growing up in Northwest Indiana, I am proud that my family's been doing business here for nearly 100 years, which started with my grandfather, John Gladish. Over my career, I've witnessed families being torn apart by the negligence of others and everything from on-guarded openings at construction sites to reckless driving on our roads. Our experienced attorneys, paralegals, and staff know that insurance companies and their lawyers will go to great lengths to avoid paying compensation. Do not waste your one and only opportunity to seek fair compensation for your loss. Give the Gladish Law Group a call and put our team to work for you. Welcome back to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network. You're tuned into the Host Connection Halftime Report. All right, we're going to get started here with the second half in just a few moments. They're going to put a fresh three minutes on the clock to let these guys warm up. And while they do that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the starters again in the matchup tonight between Crown Point and Maryville. And it is brought to you, it's time for the starting lineup sponsored by Gladish Law Group. They're here to help, action, not words. 
So, starting quarterback for the Crown Point Bulldogs because they are going to start the second half. Yes, that's they Noah, are. That's Noah Erling, and then the running back, Larry Ellison. Your receivers, Cam Sorcy, Landon Delich, and Nick Soley with the tight end, Seamus Mulaski, rounding out the receiver core. And then on the offensive line, as you said, the five best friends of Noah Erling today. <laughs> yes, and, they re- are. and really, they've been the best friends of Larry Ellison as well. That's Elia Paviadakis. Jeff Machete, Nathan Gregory, Austin Rivera, and Paul Clark, your starters for the Bulldogs. And then for the special teams, you have the kicker, Oliver Brewer, the punter, Sam, uh, Cam Sorcy, long snapper is Carson Granger, the holder, Noah Ehrlich. And we got the defensive alignment for the Maryville Pirates as well on the... Defensive line, it'll be Terrell Elmore, who we've called his name quite a bit today. Yes, we have. Adam Camp for Roshan McGee and James Veal. Kind of in the linebacker position, you got Trenton Nixon, Jeremiah Jordan, and Trey Stevens with guys on the outside of that that are kind of the cornerbacks and kind of just playing on the edges is John Peters and Jalen Ramsey. And then in the secondary, you got Jaden Mason and Greg Hughes. And that was your starting lineups for tonight's matchup, brought to you by our friends at Gladish Law Group. Gladish Law Group continues to be recognized as U.S. News and World Report as a top law firm. Visit dgladishlaw.com for more information. Those are your second half starters to get things going. We'll give you the Maryville starting lineup when they hit the field offensively with the crown point defense a little bit later on. Well done there. Mr. Bradner? You know, this is not uh, my, not my first rodeo there, I Mr. Know. Simmons. Just, just trying to give you some confidence. <laughs> <laughs> How nice of you. Hey. You know, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> trying to build you up. Well, I don't need to do that with you. I know you're already you're already built as, as high as it's going to go. So. And when you get my age, it's, it's only going to go south. The 29, right? Yep. 29 years of working... Uh, in the education business, or is it a little bit more? Oh, you're in the 30s. I 30s. Forgot. They're in the 30s. 33. That's weird. I'm only 32. And 20 <laughs> years here at Region Sports. I'm a little over there. This is my 11th season with Region Sports now. Yeah, because last year was my my 10th. And we'll have the opening kickoff of the second half, and it is brought to you by Quintel. This kickoff and all kickoffs are presented by Quintel Incorporated, specializing in the reconditioning, repair, and remanufacturing of heat exchangers. So kicking things off for the Maryville Pirates will be Giovanni Martinez. I haven't seen him a whole lot tonight. Is he hasn't yeah, this had a is whole his, lot of a... This is his first time on the field. If he, all he does is kicking. I beg your pardon. It is number 43, Darren Wiggins, out to kick. Back to return is Jones. Oh, and a little squib kick right there. Crown Point covers it up. They're going to start with great field position. That'll be at the 44-yard line. Yeah, that's pretty typical for this Crown Point Bulldog team, starting with that good field position. They've taken advantage of it most of the time. Yes, they have. I thought we were going to, you know, it was going to get really interesting when Maryville stopped him on that opening possession. I thought maybe we would have a chance to have a very tight ball game, and that may still be the case. Maryville can come out here in the second half and really turn on the Jets if they can get some advantage going on their side. They need the big mo. Yeah, they definitely got to get a three and out here, or just just hold them without a score here. But Crown Point's just been doing it what they want the last quarter. Handoff is to Ellison, who breaks a couple of tackles and juts ahead. Pile is still moving up to the scrum. But they do stop the forward progress at the 49-yard line, so it'll be a pickup of five. Yeah, Crown Point's dominated that last about eight minutes of that second quarter, and it seems like they're coming out to a good start right there. It's going to be second down and about six. So getting back to the line are the Bulldogs. 13 seconds on the play clock. And off to Ellison again. Bounces off one. Juts ahead. Getting very close to that first down marker. He's going to be about a yard and a half shy. 
Well, nice job uh, right there of Allison sort of feeling the hole. Looks like we got a stoppage of play. We got a player down for Maryville, but Allison did a nice job. He thought he was going to go outside, sort of jump, jump cut, and then cut it back inside with that jump cut and just ran straight ahead for about four more yards. So it looks like it's going to be third down and about two. It was Jalen McAllister that was down. We appreciate everyone who tuned into the Hose Connections halftime report. Brought to you by the Hose Connections. They're proven under pressure. Do, 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 do. I know secretly you want to do it with me when, <laughs> when, I, when I do that. You can feel free to jump in anytime you want. All right. I, I don't, I, I, I I'll, wait until the, I'll wait until November. I can just I can see the look on your face when I do it. You're just you're ready for it. But make sure you stay with Region Sports after the game as we send it back to the Centure Bank Studio. RSN will recap all of tonight's action from around the region. All from the Centure Bank Studio. You were there a couple weeks ago. Yeah, the, well, when we uh, did the uh, Valparaiso game, it started at 6.30, so I got back just in time. I, I got on the RSN helicopter and made it there in no time. <laughs> you know, I've asked to be on that, and, you know, I've you gotta, been, you I've gotta get to You got to get to 20 years, and then uh, maybe they can... Uh, Maybe at 10 years, they send out the limo for you. I do get that for baseball games, because when baseball games start at 4.30 and I don't get out till 4, I do get the, uh, the RSN uh, limo. One thing I haven't gotten yet for the football season, as Rico always points out, is I usually get the, the hair and makeup team. Ah. That hasn't come my way yet. We do have three awards we're going to hand out at the end of this one. We've got the... Crow Company's Lantern Man Superhero of the Game. We've got the Proud Union Home Play of the Game presented by IKORCC and the Boilermakers Local 374 Blue Collar Player of the Game. Getting up and walking under his own power, Jalen McAllister, the junior defensive lineman, walking under his own power. As you have pointed out tonight, for a few of these injuries that we've seen over the course of the evening, that be that cramping. Yeah, just look, yeah. I mean, it's, it's still a little warm out there, but it should be. What's uh, what do we got a temperature wise? You got it on your. Ah, we do have the economy electric heating and cooling game night forecast. It's a very comfortable seventy one degrees, clear skies up ahead. I think we can really see what's it's too dark, but. <laughs> well, it was a full moon a couple days ago. Maybe like a blue moon they call it yes. or something. I know you study the moon very very carefully. As Ellison runs ahead, and he's gonna break free and run into the end zone. For a Bulldog touchdown. That was a 50, 47 yard touchdown run right there by Ellison as he continues to score for tonight. That is his fourth touchdown, putting him up uh, in high standings for the uh, Crow Lantern Man superhero of the game. Man, just running right through. Uh, untouched. Right through the line, untouched. And Brewer is on for the extra point. He had one missed earlier, and this one is going to be good. The other one was blocked, so it is a okay, sorry, it is no good. So no good on the extra point. So it's twenty-six to nothing. You're listening to Game Nine of the Region Sports Network. We'll step aside for one minute on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Since two thousand. Hose Connections in Hammond has been a premier leader in the hydraulics industry. Hose Connections is a one-stop shop offering quality hydraulic and pneumatic products and services. Hose Connections takes pride in not only meeting, but exceeding customers' expectations. To learn all about the products and services that Hose Connections offers, visit HoseConnectionsInc.com or call 219-844-6570. Hose Connections in Hammond, proven under pressure. Welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel. This is a Quintel kickoff. This kickoff and all kickoffs are presented by Quintel Incorporated, specializing in the reconditioning, repair, and remanufacturing of heat exchangers. As Brewer on the kick, he missed the extra point. First of the season missed for him. This one picked up around the 20-yard line. Maribel going to try to jut ahead up to the 25 and taken down across the 25. And so Maryville will start with field possession at about the 27. We have the starting lineups brought to you by Gladish Law Group. 
for the Maribel Pirates. You got the quarterback, Dante Pope. Their running back, JQ Johnson. The wide receivers, John Peters, Zamir Martin, Ryan Cummings, Rynell Lewis. And then on the offensive line, Jaden Swanson, Deshaun Rule, Sean Hicks, Quitman, Ireland. And then Jordan Sanders. Darren Wiggins, the punter, and the kickoff. Kicker for Maryville Pirates. The long snapper, long snapper is Derek Nelson, and Dante Pope is the holder. Give us to Johnson on the left side. Not much to do on that one. You're, you're starters on the defense for the Crown Point Bulldogs. On the defensive line, Nate Kalk, Mark Gonzalez, Seamus Malaski. And then your linebackers, Will Clark, Drew Kroll, Trevor Gibbs, Dom Fenton, Jacob Jones. And then your backfield, Jalen Kelly, Griffin, Van Tischelt, and Landon Delich. That is your... Second half starting lineup for the Maryville Pirates, brought to you by Gladish Law Group. Visit dgladishlaw.com or call 219-838-1900. So second down here, Pope keeps, throws out to the left, passes incomplete. His intended target was Zamir Martin, number 12, the 140-pound junior. Dante Pope just... Just had a train run right through him with uh, Will Clark delivering a blow just as he let go of that pass. Nice job, Pope, or I'm sorry, Will, Will Clark hit him but didn't foul through on the hit because he had already released the ball. But just a little hello, say, hey, how you doing? <laughs> Between the defensive linebacker and the quarterback. How you doing? Third down now coming up. <laughs> Pope stepping up, looking to air it out. Throws to his right. Pass is, if that's caught, that's a nice catch. It'll yes, be for it a is. first down, Zamir Martin. Zamir Martin going all the way down to the ground, diving out, picking that one off the tallest blade of turf out on the field. What a great catch. Nice throw. Dante Pope throwing it to where only his guy could catch it. They get the first down, maybe get some momentum going here for the Pirates. We are talking about that full moon. If you look straight ahead. Oh, just coming over the trees right there. Yeah. So Pope awaits with three wide right receivers, two to the top, one to the bottom. Hand off to Johnson, who runs ahead. Gets a couple, gets a good handful of yards there on that play. About four or five. Let's see, they bring it up to the 44 yard line. They started at the 39. It looks like it's going to be second down and about about five yards to go. Maryville starting to get some momentum. Seems like they like that right side of their offensive line getting a good push with J.Q. Jones carrying the ball. But not on this play. Yeah, nothing doing Nothing on doing, yep. Number 21, Nate Clack. Kalk. What's that? Kalk. Kalk, sorry. I'll get it right before the end of the night. Kalk, there we go, in the backfield, tackled right at the line of scrimmage, thrown into the backfield, I should say. So now we got those three ride receivers out to the near side now. We've seen this happen a few times tonight. It's kind of worked out most of the times they do it this way. Yeah, well, they put the three receivers to the wide side of the field, and it seems like those three clear out. And then the receiver, who's on the other side, uh, number 11. That's John Peters. Peters comes across the formation and is going to catch the pass. That's Third what they've been running so far. Third down and five, looking for something to do over the and middle. And it's they were looking for Peters, and he got just a little bit too much onto the left. Yeah, Peters was going across the field just like I talked about. The three on the, to the wide side ran to the right, left-hand side. Peters ran across the field. But, again, what the problem was, Dante Pope had no time to set his feet and throw. Had a had a bulldog right in his face. Because Peters they, was do you, open. Do you think? Do you think they were barking at him as they were? No. Could be. I would say more. I would say more of a growl. Wiggins kicks this one away. This is a really nice punt out to the twenty, and this is going to take a nice. Oh, it goes out of bounds. Now well, let's the, see where they mark it. They say it lands at the one, but it goes out of bounds and then comes back inbounds on the bounce. So we'll see officially where they mark it as Crown Point will take over in their own territory. Not the worst starting position they or starting position they've had tonight. They're going to mark it at the twenty yard line on the far hash. That was almost like a touchback. Twenty six nothing. Your score. So 
Starts at the 20. And they put the I ball in play. All the offense still in the huddle on the sidelines as they sprint out to the field. And one thing we will talk about with it being 26, once it gets to a 35-point deficit, then we do see a running clock. I, I don't see that happening. Yeah, I will. It, that'll be kind of iffy at this point, but you never know. Ellison gets tackled in the backfield, but there is laundry on the play. At number 14 in the backfield for the Pirates. That is... Trey Steffens. Yeah, Stevens. Stevens. The senior. Yeah, nice job. There was a host of Pirates out there. They're calling it... They called it against the offense. Yes, they called yeah, holding yeah, on the yeah. offense right at the point of attack. There was three Pirates just waiting for Ellison to get to the line of scrimmage. And so it's going to be a loss of loss of about four on the play, second and 14. Four, or 7.45 to go here in the third quarter. Formation hand on or nope, I beg your pardon. As Ellis or uh, Ehrlich is on the run, pass is caught, and this will be a first down. As it looked like it was beyond the sticks. Number eighty-three, Cam Sorcy on the catch. Cam Sorcy. Boy, Ehrlich did an awesome job escaping trouble. He had Terrell Elmore all over him, and he was running to his left and was able to set his feet for a split second and throw the ball. A perfect pass right to Cam Sorcy for the first down. It, it's been really fun. We've had a chance to call Hobart games over the last number of years. Yes. It has been fun to watch his development as a quarterback the last, this will be the third year now, as Ellison runs out to the left side, crosses the 40, and looks like he's going to be down for a first down. Looks, looks like about 12 yards on the first down. First down play. So it is another first down for the Bulldogs. Clock continues to run under seven minutes now. Jumped a little bit on that uh, first down call by the scoreboard, huh? Me? Oh, yeah, no, yeah. I just I happened to notice it was loud, and I turned around. <laughs> no jumping on this side. What are you talking about? Ehrlich. Hands off Ellison, left side. Gets close to midfield before he's tackled. Yeah, nice job right here at Crown Point, eating some play, some game clock up. Getting a nice drive going here. Six yard gain on the play. So up to the 48 and a half, 48 and a quarter yard line. But that game of inches, Ehrlich moves out of the pocket, rolling to the right, steps up, throws, passes caught. Delich out across the 40 in their own territory. Delich is always kind of the dependable receiver out there. Yeah, he is. Nice pattern, split a couple of the defensive backs, found an open spot, sort of settled in it. Ehrlich does a nice job rolling out, and when he does roll out out of the pocket, he sets his feet, gets his shoulder squared to the line of scrimmage, and just throws a bullet right in. Nice job, both guys. Easy pitch and catch out there, making it look simple. 37 and a half yard line to start things up here on this first down for Crown Point. Hand off Ellison again, right side. He's got room to run. He gets picked up at the 20 before he spun down around the 16 yard line. Yeah, nice job right there by Crown Point. Offensively, they had. Three receivers to the top, tight end, tight end sitting out up on the top, only one receiver to the bottom side, and they found a little soft spot right there to the, to the right. Nice job, Ellison, just hitting that hole and accelerating. Peters is a little slow to get up for the Maryville Pirates over there. He's kind of shaking it off. He has to get back to his spot, though, because here comes Crown Point quickly here. Ellison spins out of the way of a tackle and gets tackled at about the 12 yard line. Yeah, right there what they did was they put Gibbs over right behind the center and Gibbs went in motion. Did a nice job blocking trap block right at the line of scrimmage and Ellison was able to cut inside of that and pick up about six yards on the play. Crown Point really hammering in between the tackles here. 
Again, working that play clock under 20 seconds. Four minutes and 25 seconds left in the third quarter. Switching up uh, receivers on their positions. Left four wide receivers, two at the top, two at the bottom. And we've got a whistle. As the play clock had winded down to seven and a timeout taken by Maryville. So we'll step aside. You are listening to Game Night on the Region Sports Network. It'll be a 30-second timeout on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Send to your bank and help you start establishing good spending habits today for your better tomorrow. For more information, visit sendtier.com slash student checking or visit your local branch. If you are under the age of 18, your parent or guardian must also sign on the Sentier student checking account. At the age of 25, your account will automatically convert to the Sentier checking account. You must deposit $25 to open this account. This account is not eligible for overdraft advantage. Member FDIC. Welcome back to game night on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel. Happy to have you with us on a week three matchup here between number one and number two around the around the region. Yes, big matchup here. Probably one of the headliner game of the night. But it seems like well, Crown Point has, has dominated tonight. I know that's why you're on the game tonight. Cause, that's you know, right. It's a top game in the region that's going to feature Jay Simmons. Yes. The voice of Region Sports. Is that what you're dubbing yourself now? <laughs> no. Self-title? That's it. Self, <laughs> self-titled. <laughs> Ellison moves in motion, throws to the right, pick up by Jacobs, and into the end zone. Jacob Jones. Well, what a, a nice, touchdown. what a nice play right there. They had, they had trips to the right. They bring a guy in motion, Ehrlich fakes to the left, throws back on a quick screen pass to the right, and he walks into the end zone. Nice job. Nice play fake. Great call on the play. Caught Maryville sleeping a little bit on the short side of the field. And we're going to see Oliver Brewer on for the PAT. He had one blocked earlier, one missed earlier. He was 8 of 8 coming into today, so clearly the announcer's jinx has uh, worked on him here today. And his extra point is no good so it will stay a 32 to nothing ball game at the moment you're listening to game night built by von tobel on the region sports network we're going to step aside for one minute on the region sports network the only game in town some see a student athlete working hard in the weight room we see a future leader learning there are no shortcuts to success some see a start to a swim meet. We see the starting blocks for life. Proud to keep education in front of athletics since 1903. Welcome back to Game Night here on the Region Sports Network, brought to you by Von Tobel. And this kickoff, and all kickoffs are brought to you by Quintel Incorporated. Quintel Incorporated, handling jobs of all sizes throughout the country since 1994. It's a long time ago. Yes, it is. Almost, almost 30 years ago. Could you have done that quick math real quick? Right I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> of course you weren't. When I talk, you don't listen. Yep. <laughs> Same way at our other job together, too. You walk in and come say hi. You're busy teaching. and. Well, <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> All right, Maryville needs to get some momentum going here on this yes, side. Yes, they do. Dante Pope going to be the leader trying to get something going here for the Pirates. 
They want to raise the Jolly Roger, the handoff. He's That's so going the wrong way. Uh, Johnson, is he tackled for a loss here? Johnson tackled for a loss by Cole Molaski. Molaski did a nice job right there. Random people just waved to you at the <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> you're a celebrity. You're in the press box. <laughs> Molaski right there with a nice tackle for a loss of about five yards. He was our blue-collar player of the week last week. We might have to give him another award here tonight because his dad's sitting just a couple <laughs> of standing just a few feet away from us here. Hand off again to Johnson who juts ahead. Gets back to the 20-yard line. Still a yard shy of the original line of scrimmage. So while it was a positive yardage, still the wrong direction for, for Maryville. And that's kind of been this, really the story of the night for the Maryville Pirates. Yeah, they, they just, just can't put it together. Down to about 3.05 left here in this third quarter. Getting to that line, 15 on the play clock. Third down and 11 coming up here for the Pirates. They've been able to convert on some. They had three wide receivers to the bottom, two to the top. Has all day, runs ahead, and it gets stopped at about the 25, well short of the line to gain. Well, yeah, on that particular play right there, uh, Dante Cole was, they had two receivers. One receiver ran a slant. He was looking for the slant receiver. The other receiver to the inside ran an out pattern. Great job of coverage. That was a, a true coverage sack, or I should say a gain of about five or six yards by Dante Pope, but a coverage punt, com, punt for the Bulldogs right there. So Darren Wiggins will punt it away. Then they have to rush somebody out coming out a little bit late there. They just get the snap off with one second left. Snap is taken inside the 40, so trying to sell a, a play there as we had a little Maryville connection there, and that's where uh, Delich is asking and saying, hey, he bumped into me. I, you know, should get a penalty on that. Yeah, is, uh, what is that? A, is that a hose connection? That was a connection that's... Uh, <laughs> Now, I want to just uh, confirm with Zach Sanelli, who's working a great uh, production over there. I always sound, sound different in my ears. Is that coming through normal on your end? I just want to make sure. Okay. They told me to, told me to turn you up. So. Okay. All right. I, sure. I would be surprised they didn't say turn them off. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you'd be doing the game by yourself, sir. I don't know if you want that. You can handle it, though. Oh, yeah. Give out to the left side. Well, that no one carry. Do, 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 do. I got that head, that song stuck in my head now that they've just been playing it. Oh, wait, is that the one you're talking about? Yep. So, yeah, Crown Point's definitely going to be slow walking the plays out there. Yeah, we do have uh, Logan Hat out there as the quarterback now. And out to run is Tommy Guadagno for the Crown Point Bulldogs. So Hat in at quarterback, gives off to Guadagno, and he will run ahead up to the, to the 49 yard line it looks like. So just shy of midfield, it'll be third down coming up here. We got less than a minute to go here in the third quarter. Crown Point in complete control out here, just running that play clock down, gonna Third down, they'd definitely like to get this conversion. Still a about the starting uh, wide receivers out there, but... Then just about 12 seconds left on the play clock. I, I'm going to ask you this, and it may not be relevant at the moment in time, as we're going to see Guadagno run ahead. Very close to that first down line. They give him the 48, and the pile pushed ahead a little bit more. It looks like it's going to be a first down for the Bulldogs. Okay, so in these three games now for Noah Ehrlich this season, he's been pulled in the second half for, obviously because of the score the way that it is. Does that potentially affect the way things go later on in the season? Oh, no, not at all. Okay. I think it, you know, it's good to get this, somebody else out on the field and get some, get some uh, 
Practice under the lights as we go down to 5 4 3 2 to end the third quarter. So that is going to be the end of the third quarter. We're going to step aside for one minute. You are listening to Game Night of the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4ajobdoneright.com. Well, welcome back to game night here on the Region Sports Network. As we got the got the moon on the on the camera for the later on for the tape delay. It looks awesome out you, there. That full almost full moon. I can say you were frazzled there because you didn't know we were coming back because you were uh, making sure we had that on camera. And all of a sudden, you put on that headset just like broke my ear. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I just gotta give you a hard time since I, I wasn't calling you out that much on. Uh, on the mispronunciation. Hey, it's okay. <laughs> it, 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 it happens occasionally. Just fun to work with the great Jay Simmons. Start of the fourth quarter here. Hat in at quarterback, looking to air it out to the left. He's going to make a throw. Oh, and Soli almost coming up with that one. Had he come up with that, Jay, that is 100% our proud Union home play of the game. Yes, it would have been. That was, a, that was a perfect throw. He let it out there. And let Soli try to run underneath it, and Soli stretch completely out. Hands, ex the, the hands, ex yep. So he was flying through the air, just a touch too much. It's like you in softball, like just going out there and laying out for those. Hey, catches. that look that looked like me back in the day. Not this past week. No, no, no. 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 Oh, okay. Hat gets turned around, and a little trickery here as Soli gets this one, tries to fake the defense. And gets wrapped out of bounds, and you're going to see a lot of coaches on the sideline maybe trying to get a late tackle out of bounds call. It's not going to go their way, though. Yeah, especially when it's on your sideline. You always try to encourage the official to make a play for, or a call for your side. You know, just in case they may have missed it. You were <laughs> let, you know, letting them know that, hey, this is what happened in case you may have missed it. Oh, it's, yes. It's always a polite gesture. Every conversation that Coach Bazia and Coach Cease have are very nice, polite conversations with the officials. Oh, definitely. They're usually asking them where they're going for dinner after the game together. Where would you recommend here in, uh, in the Hub City? Uh, public Bar and Rec Center. There you go. Hat looking to air it out again. This one almost picked off, but caught by Delich at the 31-yard line. <laughs> Yeah, right through the hands of number nine for the Pirates. Jaden Mason. And just f he goes through his hands and flops right into, whose was it? That was Landon Delich. Yeah, great concentration by Delich as the ball slipped through the defensive back's hands and right into his. Caught the ball on his knees so he wasn't able to go anywhere, but he still picked up the first down. So they officially mark it at the 32. Just to the left of the line there on this... Near side hash, receivers on this near side, no one to the right. Hand off to Cordagno on the left side. He tries to make a run. And gets tackled out of bounds near the 25. So yeah, nice. Seven on the play. Yeah, nice job right there. Offensive line getting a big push right there. I mean, I'm. They don't have the play sheet in front of me. It looks like the starting offensive line is still pretty much intact out there. So 60, 63, 68, 76, and 58. Can you read all those numbers quickly? Um, it's a test. Go. Yep, they're all out there. You didn't even look. I did. <laughs> Four wide receivers, three at the top, one to the near side. Hat looks to throw. Looks to his right after looking to his left. Play is in the air. Who came down with it? Oh. It's Bearable. going to be an interception. Who came up with it? 
Looks like number 11 for the Pirates. That's it. John Peters, who's had quite a decent day offensively for the Pirates as well, and now gets the INT defensively. Yep, in the end zone, so the ball's going to come out to the 20-yard line. The Pirates get the ball back here with... That is 10.57 left on the clock. I have to, put my, I have to get the binoculars out to see that one. <laughs> But a nice job right there by the defensive back, Peters. Stayed with it all the way through. The pass probably could have been thrown instead of to the slot receiver, to the outside receiver. And, uh, Logan. Delich. Is that who you're looking at? Or Lance? Oh, I'm sorry, number Logan 15. Pat. Excuse me. Sorry. So now Crom or Maryville will take over here in their own territory at the 20-yard line. Pope looking to throw, has the pressure coming from behind, and gets taken down. Pope was sacked on the play by 85. That's Seamus Mulaski in on the sack. Yeah, Mulaski did a nice job. He came all the way around from the backside and made the, made the sack. But again, that was a, a definitely a coverage sack. That great secondary of the Bulldogs all night has blanketed these very good receivers. Second down coming up here. It was only a loss of a yard on the play officially, so not the worst thing that could have happened is we'll see five wide receivers, two to three to the near side, two to the far side, to the left of Dante Pope. Throws to the left on a little screen pass here. And this one taken back for a loss as well. There's just nothing doing for yeah. this variable team right now. Yeah, number 44, Drew Kroll. On the tackle right there. Nice job coming up from his linebacker position. The tackle looks like right at the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be third down and 12. You know, after that interception, you really would want to see... Some positive. You want to see some positive, and they're just not getting that right now because while the, while the wind may be a little bit elusive for you, it's not impossible, <laughs> but... We need, you need some, you need to, some you positive need momentum for next week. That's, that's what I'm looking for. Pope stepping up in the pocket, throws ahead, passes deflected. It was intended. I know that was intended for number 23, Javion Gibbs, but maybe Raylan Lewis was in there as well. Yeah, I think it was number 23. That's what, that's what I thought. It was yep. uh, Javion Gills. Yeah, just, just over the top of a stretched out hand, sort of tried to tip it back to himself and just couldn't get a hand on it. Great defensive coverage as yes. well out there. Two, two defensive backs on him. This is going to be a short punt straight up in the air, picked up at the 46-yard line, and that's where it's going to be taken by Jones. So Crown Point with a chance to really put this ball game away as they will be at the 46-yard line, trying to go 46 yards to get another score. Again, really, in essence, another score will create a running clock for the rest of the game, even with a field goal. But I don't think Crown Point's going to be attempting a field goal, even though, the, to me as a coach, I'd want to get that field goal kicker out there as much as possible. Get his mind get, right. Get his, get his rhythm back. Get him, you know, under the lights, even though there's no pressure right here. Get him under the lights and see what he can do with it. Yeah, having some missteps on those PATs after he was perfect coming into yes. this week. And, you, you and he's gave, only a you, freshman, so that's still... Okay, yeah, he's good. Four wide receivers. Two to either side. The give is to Guadagno, who runs ahead up to the 43-and-a-half-yard line, it looks like, maybe up to the 43. It's always kind of interesting. We watch the officials as they kind of, on one side, they'll be in one spot, then the other one will be at another, maybe a little. And then they yeah, kind of well, the, like, what they do they is they go, they go to the one that's closest yeah, closest to the ball is the one that usually marks it. That was uh, Roshan McGee, number 93, from the Pirates on the tackle. It's kind of fun to watch the far official just like make that little itty bitty slide. Hat looking to throw, finds Jones on the near side. Breaks a couple of tackles, gets through, and lands down at about the 36-yard line. It's going to be real close to that first down. So, looks like they are going to mark that as a first down. And that'll be another first down. So, Jones, he's having himself quite a, quite a nice game today. He had that nice long run earlier in the game. Yes, he did. Touchdown, so certainly a candidate for one of our awards today. Perhaps our crowd company, Lancer Man, superhero of the game, or maybe setting up that... Proud Union Home Play. Yeah, how about by, that? By KORCC and our 
Your okay. Boilermakers local 374 blue collar player. I, I got the blue collar player of the game already. I got it locked and loaded. Hold on, the game's not over. I know, here. I know. Guaragno runs ahead there. You're going to like it. Don't worry. We have awards to hand. I'm going to like anything. <laughs> I'm easy to please. That's why they put me with you. Hey, Dave. There you go. <laughs> You, know, you look in the stands right here, not very many people leaving. It's, uh, you know, and it's 32 to nothing. Crown Point in complete control. Like locked down to five. Here's the snap. Guanagno runs ahead, jutting and getting to the 25 yard line. That's going to be very close, and it's going to be passed for a. Another Bulldog first down. So even if they, let's say even they don't come across and get a score, they're still milking this clock down. It's seven yes, it minutes. Is. So just trying to waste as much time on the clock as they run ahead here. Could have wasted a little bit more, but they run ahead. And they, they, they didn't even let the guys on the chains across the other side of the field get set up. I, I was looking down at my play sheet and... <laughs> I was going to say the, the chain gang wasn't even set. Now we got the officials. No, hold on. The, the chains are all over the place. It should be it should be second and ten. It should be second and about seven. The, the down marker guard keeps moving back and forth. And it's funny is uh, the, one of the coaches on the Maryville sidelines like, hey, 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 what are you doing? It's like you need to go back here. Agno to the left side. Gets tripped up. Boy, he had a touchdown on his mind right there. Number nine with the shoestring tackle for the Pirates. Jaden Mason, we've called his name a decent amount tonight. Yes. But the important thing, whether they're getting that score or getting that first down, the clock continues to move. 6.30 to go in this one. Guadagno to the left side again. Tries to cut back to the right up to near the 15. We'll see where they mark the forward progress. If it's at the 15, it's another first down. Yeah, Garagno did a nice job right there. He thought at first he did a little hop step, thinking, hey, I'm going to bounce this to the outside, and all of a sudden he saw it close down, took another hop step, turned it right into the hole, and was able to get the first down as the clock continues to run at 6.16 left in the fourth quarter. We do me a favor. Will you text our friend Joe Skavarik and get a score of that uh, game he's probably at tonight? I shall do that. Appreciate you. A great. Uh, there we go. That's. Is that a final score or just a? That was at. That was 15 minutes ago. Okay, I'll see up 21 to 20. I, I ask about that as a timeout taken because our our good friend Rich Castillo, our operations manager, asked for the score. So instead of answering his text, I'm just going to answer it live on the air. <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm waiting for an update, but uh, that was 15 minutes ago from our from a buddy of mine, Scott Freckleton, at the game, or it was at the game. Uh, Freck. We're going to keep it right here on the Region Sports Network. Again, we have some awards we're going to hand out a little bit later on this evening. Yeah, that crowd Company's Lantern Man Superhero of the Game, the Proud Union Home Play of the Game, presented by IKORCC. And also as a... Hey, who's going to be back in the studio after you get done with the, the last one? You know, nobody's, uh, nobody's told me who's in our studio tonight. It might be uh, Jack Thiel, and nobody's giving me an update as to who else might be. So if someone wants to send me that, I can let the fans know like who's going to be out there. But you can stay with Region Sports after the game, because we will send it back to the Centier Bank studio. RSN will recap all of tonight's action from around the region from the Centier Bank studio. So that is, as, as of right now, that is the current score. Okay. Lake Central 21, Portage 20. We'll that was a, early, uh, what was, leads. who sponsors that? Strachan Van Til. Strachan Van Til, home right. scoreboard update. I wasn't reading your mind on that one. My apologies. So, 5.55 left to go in this one between the Bulldogs and the Pirates, and you know, the Pirates, obviously, this isn't looking great on the scoreboard. However, they are still going to be a team that are forced to be reckoned yes, with. Yes, they are. They'll definitely be dropping in the uh, 5A polls from the number two spot. And they get those Portage Indians next week. Yeah, and next week, oh, that's next Pat week. Keeps, throws to his left. Here goes Gibbs for the end zone. He barrels his way. Barrels. In for the touchdown. He trucked his way to the end zone. Gibbs. 
just puts his helmet down, his shoulders down, and just slams into the end zone for the score. Wow, what a run right there. I, didn't, I wouldn't want to be the guy, the one of those defensive backs coming up and trying to make the tackle on him. Whew. I think at that point I would just kind of cower in my shell and just get out of the way. <laughs> We are going to have a running clock the, west, the rest of the way as that will make it a 38 to nothing score. And I do need to get one thing in here as Brewer is on for the PAT. And what might that, that be? Hold on one minute. Brewer on. And this PAT is good. So that will make the score 39 to nothing. We're going to keep it right here. Mayor Pete Land and the Crown Point Paints Department are proud to support Crown Point Bulldog football and say, Go Bulldogs! Crown Point remains dedicated to preserving history, celebrating everyday life, providing the best in-city services, and encouraging smart growth. Mayor Land and the Pace team invite everyone to Bulldog Park for a variety of concerts, including Lone Star, with special guest Jameson Rogers on September 3rd. For more information, contact the Pace Department at 219-661-2271. How many days is that from today? Uh, two. All right, there you go. Just checking your math there. It's not something we need to <laughs> normally be checking on since I was able to get through it. School. There you go. Boy, you couldn't ask for a, a more perfect game tonight from the Bulldogs. They almost air free. I think what maybe one turnover, one fumble by Ellison. We did have. Well, we did have. Yeah, we had a fumble. We did have an INT. But that was sort of when the game was out of hand already. Yeah. So not not the end of the world, but it's still something Coach Pazia is going to have in the back of his mind as. I think the, the the thing you're going to walk away from this game is you're going to be working on that uh, field goal unit. This is a Quintel kickoff. This kickoff and all kickoffs are presented by Quintel Incorporated. By the way, not only uh, does Mr. Simmons update all of you on the Strike and Van Til hometown scoreboard update and writing down all of our plays and come up with award winners, he kills bugs here in the press box. Yes, I do. <laughs> they come flying near him and he just... The animal rights activists are going to come after you now. Oh. <laughs> so we have a running clock. So there is 435 left to go in this one. Yeah, we talked not only about a, uh, a, a beautiful game played by Crown Point tonight for the most part. It's a I would say almost perfect. Almost perfect along with the temperatures here. A lot better yes. than what we had experienced last week where it was almost felt like the surface of the sun for a little while. <laughs> Well, we're on the surface of the moon tonight. I think I lost about three pounds just in water from sweat. <laughs> Got a new cue in there, guys? 15. And this is a new quarterback who keeps, but it is, it's not a keep. It is uh, Jensen who runs, and... That number 17, Jordan Sanders? I, I didn't have my binoculars. I know it's uh, 15. So the new quarterback for Maryville, they have Darnell Bowles. Number 15 on their on their roster. I'm surprised they still have JQ Johnson in there. Trying to just build any kind of positivity they can. High snap, give to Johnson. He runs ahead, breaks one tackle, and then he gets taken down at about the 35. I have to line. I have to say that's one thing that's been very consistent is the high snaps from the center, Sean Sean Hicks. It seems like it's always been a Way too high where the quarterback doesn't get it into a rhythm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where it's right at his in his waist. So he's always been reaching up. And you know, and Dante Pope at six one, that's a pretty decent sized target. So I my question to you would be where is the perfect spot to be able to if you're in the shotgun, where do you want it like near the chest then? Yeah, right. As we have a breakaway here. And runs off the tackles. This is Johnson running ahead. Biggest gain of the night for him. Out to the 35 on the other side of the 50. We have some potential uh, fireworks brewing here. Between. Well, yeah, behind the play, there was a couple players going after it. The officials did the perfect thing, got in the middle of it and stopped it. So yeah, nice job by the officials, especially with uh, 224 left in the fourth quarter. So it's first down here for the Maryville Pirates as Bowles. 
back in the shotgun. He takes the snap, gives it up ahead here and tackled immediately. Let's go ahead and name our award winners in tonight's game. We will have the Crowl Company's Lantern Man superhero of the game. The Crowl Companies are proud to recognize the superheroes on the gridiron. Yeah, we're going to go with uh, Crown Point running back, Larry Ellison. He had one, two, three, four touchdowns. His, his highlight of the night was the 48-yard run that was at 10.58 in the third quarter. So in the first minute and two seconds, Crown Point comes out and just shows some more dominance in that in the second half. So that goes to Ellison. He had a touchdown run of two, 11, four, and 48 yards. That is the Crown Lanterman superhero player of the game. Perfect candidate there as... Uh Bowles stepped up and tried to run out of pressure and then found a new set of pressure to run into <laughs> out to his left. Let's go with our proud Union Home Play of the Game presented by IKORCC. Learn more at IKORCC.com. They are the Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. And that came at, at 6.50 in the first quarter. That was Jacob Jones on the reverse, reverse pitch from Ehrlich to Jacob Jones runs down the sidelines and sets up the first score of tonight's game by Ellison. Jacob Jones did a nice job. The whole defense was running to its right. Jacob Jones came from the right, left side of the offense and got it and took off all the way down the sideline. Got pushed out of bounds at the one-yard line, and that goes to Jacob Jones on that play. Yeah, it was a fun play. Yes, Good it was. Ball. Nice catch by Rynell Lewis on this one to give... Maryville a first down. Maryville knocking on the door to try to get to the end zone. They might have one or two more plays. They go for the end zone. Pass is caught. In for the touchdown, Zamir Martin. Yeah, nice catch. Nice throw right there by the backup quarterback. Just throws a dart right in there. So to end the game, they will have... That'll be the end of it. So that is a crown point win. But again, for the... How do you like that? They they did that because they knew what I was going to do with the with the blue collar player of the game. So they let up a touchdown at the very end of the game. They will not attempt the extra point. Let's go ahead with our proud Union Home player of the game. I'm All sorry. Right. Let's go with our Boilermakers local 374 blue collar player of the game. All right, I'm going to change it though. All right, it, it's going to be blue collar players of the game. I'm giving it to the Crown Point defense. What a job! all night long up until the until there was no time left on the clock it was a shutout and that's that's something pretty good to do right there you shut out Maryville Pirates who had been averaging 35 points a game last year against this group Crown Point gave up 40 points so to shut them out all the way until there was one second left on the clock what a great job by the Crown Point defense Crown Point defensive coordinator and defense staff did a great job today Wow, that was just anti over, just anticipated everything tonight. What a great job by the whole staff on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, I think we literally called everyone's name at some point. For <laughs> yes, we did. Or for whatever the case may be. So, yes, well-deserving for the entire Crum Point defense. Our executive producer is Chris Ramirez. Our, operating, our operations manager is Rich Castillo. Coordinating producer is Claude Martinez. And our sports director is Jack Field. Your broadcast crew today, myself, Michael Brenner, along with the late, with the great. Jay wow, Stanley, late. Wow. The, uh, the great. Bumps me Stanley. off. Have you been talking to my wife? <laughs> Just a little bit. All right. And then our producer, the great Zach Zanelli, he's did a great job. And then on video tonight, we'll bring that to you a little bit later, is Scott Stessel. Big thanks to Maryville coaches, uh, Brad Cease, and then uh, Crown Point coach Craig Bazia for giving us everything that we needed for the game today. Athletic directors for Maryville and Crown Point, Amy Beckham and Bill Derula. As the Crown Point team is celebrating with their student section. Yeah, how about it, man? That's a, that's a mob on the field right there. It was right Hawaiian at the, night, by the way. Oh, yes. But they're celebrating it up, the helmets up, having some fun on the sideline after the game. Great job by the Crown Point Bulldogs tonight. And, of course, a big thanks to you, the viewers, on YouTube, Facebook, regionsports.com, and IHSAATV.com. Without you guys, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do what we do, so thank you very much. Stay tuned. We'll have more action from the Centier Bank Studio. Make sure you stay tuned, and then all the action you need for week four. You've been watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, built by Von Tobel on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town.